2019 was all fun and good, but 2020 is looking to be great. 2020 is looking to be great, 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 great. of Defend the House and welcome back to another top 10 list from me and Jameson, our top 10 games of the year. Uh, we have been doing this long video podcast thing for... This would be... I don't know if this is your 7 or 8, I, but like since 2013 was the first time we did these. Yeah. Best of 2013 was the first one. So we've been doing this for a while. Well, the almost. entire generation has come and gone and we're still yeah. here. We're on our way to 10 years. Oh, getting there. It's really but, not um, that far away now, is it? Fuck. Let's not think about that. Uh, but if you're new, if you've never heard one of these before, uh, the format's pretty simple. Me and Jameson have a list of ten games each. They are secret to one another. We don't know each other's lists. Mm-hmm. We obviously have talked games uh, as the year has progressed in podcasts and our big roundup podcast as well as the Defend the House podcast. We've got two of them. Uh, so you know, we have vague ideas. Yeah. Um, but since 2020 has been a weird year, um, <laughs> you know, yeah. obviously I can't be bothered to go into it again. Um, you were all there if you're listening to this, unless you've just been born. It was a rough one, and it affected the productivity of the video game industry in different ways. So, um, you know, there was stuff. We got some pretty decent entries yeah. for 2020. Yeah. But I think a lot of them came out earlier in the year because they were further along in their production. You know, beginning of 2020 had some nice stuff. And then from like March onwards, it was a little bit of a wasteland with kind of the indie market taking over the year, I feel like. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say like, I'm not going to, I think, I think my thought on 2020 gaming would be the, I'll, I'll look, I'll take the positive look at it and okay. say, I think it's great. And kind of, a, and I said this in Cyberpunk's chat. That, like, I think it's kind of miraculous that any games came out after March, mm-hmm. and uh, let alone any of them being good. The and I culture think it's... had a big year as well. Oh, for sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, this was the year where everyone was like, oh, oh, gaming is like, oh, yeah, this is a beneficial hobby to have mm, <laughs> in the escapism year where everyone... is good. Yeah. And being able to, like, connect with people through the internet and your computers, um, yeah, came in very handy this year. I will say, I wish that there were a few more games that I could have sunk more time into and ignored the world with. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, some bigger games, longer yeah. games. But I, I think it's it's amazing that anything came out. I think it's incredible that consoles launched this year. Yeah, um, I was, yeah. I have some worry about that for a while. Oh yeah, and in Sony's case, like launched with software that was good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, and and yeah, the from March onwards, it was definitely a bit of a wasteland. But there, mm-hmm. yeah, there were things that I wished were, I wanted more from, didn't deliver several times yeah. throughout this year, um, which is unfortunate. There were some uh, real bummers uh, in various forms in games this year. Not and obviously there were a lot of bummers outside of gaming. Uh, <laughs> yeah, a few. Yeah, it was. It was. I yeah. 
It was it's a... not. It's not the best year in any regard. I would say. No. That's but you're right. It could the have been understatement quieter. of the century. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. You're right. You we could have got you nothing. Know, yeah, and I, I think the thing that I was going to say right before we started recording was that, uh, you know, at the end of last year, we we really had a lot of hopes for 2020, <laughs> mm. and uh, they really were slapped in the face and thrown in the garbage. <laughs> yeah, I uh, enjoy seeing um, comments on one of your Halo Reach videos, which I think was our last video of 2019. Uh, yeah. You've got that little outro going, you know, I think 2020 is going to be a great year. And people who have been uh, enjoying that in retrospect. Really enjoying oh, I should. That. I'll have to look at that. Yeah. Because, you know, we. You have to remember, you know, in December 2019, it was like the spring had all these Ubisoft games like Gods and Monsters, mm. uh, Marvel's yeah. Avengers, uh, Watch Dogs, and then there was Cyberpunk was supposed to come out, Dying Light 2 was supposed to come out, oh, all in like Dying the span Light. of four months. Yeah. And and on in top on top of that, Half Life, Doom, Final Fantasy, like this, that, you know, all the You're other right. games. You're right, yeah, it was crazy, wasn't it? Like the, the original schedule. And then in addition to that, there was, you know, we you anticipate March, April, May, June to be like, oh right, consoles, console reveal, rollout, E three stuff. Right. And uh we kind of knew Halo Infinite was supposed to come out with the Xbox, obviously, so that was on yeah, the agenda. Yeah, so that was on the agenda, yeah, and, um, well, we all know how that went uh, from wow. mid-March onwards, um, and is still ongoing, of course. Um, I'm just sort of, like, running my hand through my hair repeatedly, just being like, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> um, wow. Oh, yeah, Last of Us 2, we were excited about that. That was supposed to come out in February, and then it was mm -hmm. delayed, I think, till April, and then in, eventually, you know, came out in a, late that, June. That was highly was. anticipated. Uh, Ghost yeah, of was... Tsushima, you know, that was definitely coming out. Yeah, yeah. Um... Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And then, then yeah. everything happened, and, you know, so be it, whatever. But yeah, I think I look at the list of games that I played this year, and I say, I think, yeah, there's a fair number of good games here, but I yeah. didn't connect with a lot of them. I think that oh, was interesting. Point. Okay. Yeah, like I I reckon there's going to be quite a lot of variation between our lists here. Mm -hmm. um, okay. But mainly because I think a lot of the games this year were like smaller titles, like you said. It was a and, big year um, for like small multiplayer uh, things. Well, yeah, and even yeah, I guess you're right. Yeah, multiplayer is a good way to describe a lot of these games. But even the non-multiplayer ones, you know. Um, yeah, I think... And indie games is, like, the the spot where I think we, our tastes diverge the most. Um, yeah, I'd say so. And uh, and then also... so, But, like, that's not to say there weren't games, indie games that I didn't like this year. There were quite a few. But... Um, and then the AAA stuff was just a... Uh, who It was really all over the place. Mm. I think I oh, think the yeah. AAA stuff was really good in March and April. Yeah, and started then off strong. It did. It started off really strong, and then uh, I don't like. I'm just I'm just scrolling through my list right now, and then nothing uh, really happened for. And half then there year. was nothing until like the third week of December. <laughs> yeah, and obviously Cyberpunk was what it was. We talked about it for four hours. That has already gone up. Um, mm -hmm. Or I talked at you for four hours about Cyberpunk. <laughs> <laughs> it was all right. I was fatigued and Christmas um, hangover, so I was glad to sit there for a little while. Yeah, I wish that some of these games had turned out differently, obviously. Yes! Uh, I wish I had really yeah. liked the big Sony games in the summer. I mm -hmm. wish Cyberpunk had landed differently. I wish that, like... Uh, actually, no. I, I was going to say... Like, I wish that the other fall games were better, but, like, eh, most of the fall games were basically just, like, the four PlayStation games, and mm -hmm. I think those were all pretty good. Um, yeah. What so. I wanted to do before we jumped in is, mm -hmm. uh, this year, I have actually missed a couple of things, or not given certain titles enough time. Uh, we should probably say we didn't play Among Us. I think that's kind oh, of yeah, important. I, I, yeah. You know, kind of, I think it was, like, the biggest game of the year, however you oh, definitely. measure that metric. Um, I did not play Miles Morales. Right. Uh, I just wasn't in the mood. Uh, I will get to it. I actually played the intro and it was, you know, it was cool and cinematic and whatever. But I, um, yeah. I just wasn't in the mood for another Spider-Man game. 
And there isn't a lot of PS5 stuff on the near horizon. Sounds like a segue, oh. but it's not. I wish it was. <laughs> I oh. wish Horizon was on the horizon. Oh. So yeah, I'm just kind of leaving Miles on the backlog of uh, comfy couch games. I will get to it. Yes. Um, My the anticipation last thing me, is ratcheting up for new ooh, PlayStation titles. <laughs> very nice. Oh. Um, the last thing for me is Hades. I played Hades, but I just haven't given it enough time. And I know that I haven't really got past, um, I don't want to say the wall, but I like mm-hmm. haven't got into like the flow state of that game. I'm still like confused about which god to pick. I don't really know how to build builds in that yet. Yeah. And I'm still kind of like, uh, I'm just like, I haven't connected with it. Uh, I need to give it more time. I'm like 12, 13 hours in. Uh, and I just got distracted by uh, other roguelites and they were like clashing design wise. Uh, we talked about it on the podcast. That was a good podcast chat actually. But yeah, those are my, um, you know, the games I wanted to quickly list as probably, you know, decent contenders that won't pop up. Just want to explain myself. Yeah, Among Us is good that you mentioned that. Because I yeah. I still honestly don't know what Among Us is. I've seen maybe three minutes total of it, and I, I just I just don't, can't be bothered. Uh, oh, I didn't play uh, Animal Crossing. Oh, yeah, well, you know, whatever. Not, not I did, uh, and it wasn't worthwhile. Oh, <gasps> how dare you? Haha, take that, Animal Crossing nerds. One day there'll be a Nintendo game on this list. Now, Animal Crossing would have been good if I could play it on the PC in, like, fast-forward time. You know, just <laughs> speed up sp- speed up the time part of it by, like, 30%. I probably You can do that, can't you? On uh, You, like, cheat and you move the clock forward or something. Yeah, People probably, really but, annoyed. like, I can't be fucking bothered to do that. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. If it was, like, PC, I'd just open Cheat Engine and be like, boop, 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 boop. Oh, it's the next day. Oh, everything's <laughs> unlocked now. Oh, this is great. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm just trying to think if I missed anything. I, I'm sure I did. Um, Not sure, actually. There's a couple of like Japanese games that people speak very highly of that I'm just I'm probably never gonna play. Like the what, what's what's that? The um, I don't know if it's a Yakuza game or if it's a Yakuza adjacent oh, game. Oh, Yakuza Seven like a dragon. Into the dragon, yeah, something like or that. Or whatever it is, yeah. I haven't people played that either. Seem- People seem to really like that. And there's um, 13 Sentinels, which I see popping up a lot, which I know yeah, uh, you'll have I, something um, to say about at some point. And, uh, yeah. Well, I, but it, <laughs> yeah, weird. That, that yeah, would be a podcast thing. We'll get to that. I look forward to you revealing that you've played like 600 hours of the anime game. Um, uh, no, I have started it. I will spoil yeah. that. I know. I saw. I saw that. Um, it just looks like anime bullshit. And I it really, it's not, yeah, it's it not really my does. cup of tea. Not my cup of tea. So, um, but you know, I think I think I got most of it. I definitely um, got the PlayStation stuff covered for sure. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. I think we're good, mate. I sound low, like low on enthusiasm, but then I look at like the top five or six, five for sure that are like, and and I think you know, I think all those games are really good. I really, I loved my top three. Yeah, I think there are some. I, I think there were some really, really damn good games that came out this year. It was just, it's sort of harder to appreciate them, you know, in a year where everything is just so miserable and awful. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, who um, started? And I, th- I that was just going to the... say that I believe I am starting because you started with Best of the Generation, so I'll okay. we'll just keep doing that. And so I will say, regarding my. Uh, bottom where's my list here i have to bring my list up just a second <laughs> i've forgotten what it is regarding my sort of bottom four you know uh, 10 9 8 7 i would say um i probably would have preferred mildly to have put two other games in these slots okay. that weren't from this year that i'll talk about in honorable mentions but instead <laughs> i figured eh you you messaged me the other day saying like we'll probably talk about the PlayStation things and and so I'm like ah why don't I just put these other PlayStation things in here that I'm perfectly happy to have on my list in place okay. of um, non 2020 games being on here that were better than these games but you know so we're sort of we can kill two birds with one stone get the PlayStation stuff more or less all covered here mm-hmm. mild spoilers number ten. Uh, Marvel's Spider-Man Miles Morales. Got to get that full title in there. Mm -hmm. We haven't Um, talked about this at all yet. No, and this is one that I think could easily have slipped off the list because it's Spider-Man, A, you know. It it, it is uh, exactly 
another Spider-Man game. But I didn't like the last Spider-Man game. Like I didn't. Well, I didn't love it. I liked it, but I had a lot of uh, just sort of small issues with a lot of parts of it. Mm -hmm. And I think Miles Morales, I was able to enjoy it as a whole quite a bit more than the last Spider-Man. And it was nice to just play Spider-Man and sort of see why everyone was losing their mind over it two years ago. Uh, I think just the the side content is more enjoyable for me. It removed all the dumb minigame shit. It got rid of the stealth stuff. Oh, no. And it was 13 hours to do everything in that game. Uh, which is a tremendous size. It was so digestible. That was that was a big part of it. It's just... It's Spider-Man. The combat is a little more enjoyable. That he's got Miles has different uh, different move sets. Yeah, I got to the the intro and it seemed the, um, seemed you know interesting. Venom power. Venom powers. Yeah. yeah, they're easier to execute. They're a little OP, um, and they're just you get like five of them and they come out at good times and uh, it's easy to build up charge for them. And I yeah part of my, part of my problem with the last Spider-Man was just the I never was able to click with the combat for whatever reason. Yeah. And uh, I was able to here. And uh, as a PlayStation 5, it was the first thing that I sort of played through alongside uh, one other game, Astro. Um, and it was like the weekend that I got it. And it was three days, basically three sittings, really, of this really gorgeous, familiar, comfy, digestible open world experience. And hmm. I think that's... It was it was very pleasant. It was very Sometimes enjoyable. Exactly, yeah. And, but... The, the, yeah, the size goes a long ways. <laughs> when it's when it's digestible, and it's not like a ninety-hour Ubisoft game. <laughs> yeah, it's nice. And Spider-Man is very simple formula formula-wise. It's very familiar, and I think there was a little too much of it last time for me. And uh, yeah, it worked really well. I think the the plot isn't as there's not a, like the last game had really good some really good character moments. Yeah, it with did. Uh, Peter and MJ and uh, Aunt May and Doc Ock, <laughs> and um, this sort of tries for similar stuff again. And I think the storytelling is all totally solid and good. It just doesn't hit as solidly, uh, but it's still still good. And uh, as a you know visual PlayStation Five experience, <laughs> it looks really good. It, it does, looks yeah. really, really good. That's I why I played the intro just to see it. Yeah, yeah. I played with the uh, the full like 30 FPS ray tracing for the story stuff, and then yeah. when I was done that, I cleaned up in 60 FPS. And now they have 60 FPS ray tracing, which is Woo! wild. And uh, but yeah, the full native 4K thing. There's a lot of ray tracing in that game, like a lot of it. There's a lot of shiny stuff in the campaign missions. I love uh, the um the. What the fuck's that film called? The animated suit. Oh, the Spider Verse suit. Oh, it Spider -verse, looks so good. That's it. That looks so yeah. neat. The the Spider Verse suit with the um, punching like overlay thing as well, where you get like yeah. the little comic book like flax. Uh, that looked amazing. I played a good chunk of that game with the Spider Verse suit on because it just they nailed the animation on it. Uh, I like the control and, you have on that suit. I looked into it. You can like take off the frame rate frame rate right. limit, and you know it's cool. Yeah, yeah, and so it was just, um, the you know, I, I probably would have, like I said, swapped it out for something else because it was, I played it in three days, I had a great time, was really impressed by it. Also, tech-wise, like, the loading times are fucking nuts. Yeah. Um, but it's when I was deep. done with it, I, I have not played it or thought about it since then. Um, but that's... That's Not a launch a, title, baby. <laughs> well, yeah, and that's Marvel's thing for me, really, as well, right? Like yeah. Marvel, that's Marvel movies. They make. Yeah, Marvel movies are fun and entertaining and enjoyable and forgettable, and that's that. None of those. That's not a bad thing, I, and I don't regard that as like an insult. They they are very much popcorn entertainment, and it's nice to have that sometimes. Yeah. So, there you go. There's our there's our um, <laughs> Marvel Spider Man Miles Morales review roundup chat. Nice. You'll enjoy it, I think. It's it's, but it is like you 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 played a lot of that last Spider-Man game. I did, and, yeah. Um, it is, it's it's exactly that. So I'll get to uh, it. I will. Yeah. One day I'll be yeah. in the mood for something digestible and comfy. I don't know that they should put out like Spider-Man two, you know, in eighteen months from now. Mm -hmm. 
I feel like that might be a little too much Spider-Man, but they probably will because boy, people are buying a lot of copies of it. One thing I wonder about that franchise is how do they keep it varied when you kind of have to be in New York? Or do they not right. go? You know, how do they change know. that? Yeah, I wonder, I wonder. I like know. the movies, you know, have left New York, right? They went over to Europe. And, they did, yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know that you can do a third game in New York and keep it fun hmm. or interesting. Also, power-wise, <laughs> like how do you like, like I, you have to start too with all the powers, right? Otherwise, I guess so. Yeah, it wouldn't be fun. So I don't know. Yeah, I, I'm curious what they do. I, they should do a full multiverse game. That would be fun. I agree. Yeah, it, it would. At minimum, they have to have, you know, the two Spider-Man in the next one. But mm -hmm. I think bringing in a lot more of the Spider-Verse stuff would be a pretty cool thing. Because they're apparently doing that uh, with both movies now, right? With the animated and live cool. action things. All right. Well, as in, like, they're doing another Spider-Verse movie. And then also the Tom Holland Spider-Verse. Spider... I don't know what the hell is going on with that Spider-Man uh, 3, but... Sure. Who knows? I don't know. Also, Tom Holland is now in the, in the Spider-Man game. Because young Peter... He looks oh, weird, yeah. I will say. Young Peter does not suit the voice, I don't think. Uh, he looks too young. He looks like a baby. He, he looks younger than Miles Morales. Yeah, and he's supposed to be... He's I don't like know, 24. Not, not his, yeah. 25, yeah. He's been on the block been, a few times. Yeah, he's, he's been Spider-Man for a decade. Jeez. And um, I think old Peter, the old version of Peter, had the, the, the schlubbiness that is required <laughs> to, compel, to convey that. And yeah. new Peter is uh, too hot and too young, and it doesn't suit the personality, I don't think. But... Maybe I'll, you know, maybe we'll all just, we'll all just get over it eventually. I feel like so. that's like unprecedented to just change the facial model of a well-known character. It's a very strange thing that can only happen in video games. Or I guess when an actor dies in a movie franchise. Yeah, it's yeah. the same thing like that. So. It's weird. Cast someone new. It is, it is weird, but uh, whatever. Yeah, fuck okay. it. Who cares? <laughs> all right. Is it my go? Number 10. Uh, Okay. Uh, my number 10 slot is a little bit of a weird one, but it was a weird year. Yes. Um, I don't usually put um, early access games on my list because mm. I've got to the point where I don't like diving into early access products. Uh, I don't see the point. Uh, I did it a lot for my old shitty YouTube channel, so I'm just kind of sick of playing broken games. Like, why not just sit back and wait? But this game... The reason I put it on my list when theoretically you could be like, well, actually, it's not even out yet. 1.0 is 2021. Mm -hmm. It's because this game had its moment this year. Uh, and that was Phasmophobia. Oh, OK. I was thinking it was probably going to be on your list somewhere. Phasmophobia. Phasmophobia is a really janky kind <laughs> of mutated one man project. Uh, it's a hideous mess of a game, and I loved it. Uh, I don't think it would be the same product if it wasn't janky. I completely agree. I think it's charmingly janky. It is. And yeah. the game, except for maybe some connectivity issues, and our friend Dawson had, like, microphone issues. <laughs> Apart from that, like, once you're in, you're mostly in. I think oh, yeah. the servers did get pounded because this poor dude... Obviously didn't expect, you know, his game to take Hundreds off. Hundreds of the thousands way. of players, yeah. Yeah. But when it comes to a cooperative experience, it's really quite innovative, actually. I've never played anything like it. The proximity chat really adds like a strange immersion to it. Uh, and it treads this kind of fun balance between you and your friends laughing, goofing around, making fun of the game. And then I surprisingly had some pretty genuine frights in this game. I was not expecting anything in this game to scare me. But, like, I, there, there's some moments that just naturally occur where, like, the communications between you and the boys gets cut off. You don't know who's alive and who's dead. You feel like you're on your own. And some of the ghosts, uh, the models of them are not bad. They're pretty frightening and they can scuttle up on you and surprise you out of nowhere. And one of my favorite things about this game is actually being dead. Uh, I love the being <laughs> yeah. dead mechanic in this game where you are a ghostly figure. Your friends cannot see or hear you, but you can kind of snoop around, watch them play, and you can see the ghosts from a perspective where they can't see the ghosts. Uh, and it might be my favorite, uh, I guess, spectator mode of all time. Uh, games, especially Battle Royales, I know that's not relevant to Phasmophobia, but I feel like multiplayer games recently have done a really bad job of making it fun to be dead. 
Mm-hmm. Like I, I'm, I'm assuming Among Us is very similar. Like once you're dead, you're just like, oh, um, I'm just going to sit here and watch my friends have fun. And PUBG and the early Battle Royale days were the same. And it's just like a nice bit of um, like game design problem solving in Phasmophobia, where you could have just died and again been specta- spectating from like a first person view, like traditionally. And I don't know, there's just like a lot of really smart game design in this little weird janky Unity project. Um, I think the reason it's so low down, even though the highlights of this game were some of my, some of my favorite co-op moments in recent memory, uh, there is a little bit of a limit when it comes to like variation and playtime. Uh, it's early access, the guy has just chucked the game at the door, he's working on his own, and you know, you kind of learn the AI of the ghost, you play all the maps, and after a while the mystery uh, and the surprise does start to trickle away. I think mm-hmm. we only got about 12 to 13 hours out of it, but hey, you know, not every multiplayer game is about how many hours you get out of it. Uh, it's about how fun those hours are. And we uh, we made the decision to skip the tutorial, which I think was quite wise, since I think that really stretched out how much like uh, investigation and learning we had with this game. We had no idea what we were doing for like the first five hours, and I think that really helped, uh, you know, just make it more compelling. I was actually quite yeah. addicted to this game. It's got uh, it's got a pretty satisfying progression. You know, the content is just a bit lacking at the moment. Uh, but what do you expect from one man making a ghost game? But a really nice surprise. I sort of missed out on. I don't know why. I don't know what I was. But I only have like two hours of playtime in this. Like you guys played most of it, and I, I'm not sure. Yeah, trying you to figure were out like, away? Where, I didn't know. <laughs> like, I haven't left yeah. my condo in a year and a half. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm trying to remember. But it was like end of, Oct- end of September, October. Maybe. I don't know. I don't I know. Like you were busy, maybe? I don't know. I don't fucking know. But I sort of missed out. We should play like one more session so I can get oh, footage yeah. for it. I'm down. Um, yeah, but it, it is a very neat thing. And I, I love any game that has a proximity voice chat that makes sense within the context of the world. Mm-hmm. And uh, my favorite thing in that game in the brief amount of time I spent with it was the uh, weird mental asylum level where they just like somehow really nailed the sound yeah. of in-game voice chat. It, the, it There's like an echo to it that sounds like incredibly natural to it. And it was like, it was genuinely really, really impressive. Yeah, uh, and there were a few fun moments that you and I had, like when I we watched, we were the doors were closing, and we were like trying to convince each other that the door, like I wasn't closing the door on you; it was the ghost doing yeah. it. Yeah, uh, it allowed I, for some real like emergent cliche horror moments. Where oh, I was totally. like, Jameson, stop shutting the door. And you're like, yeah. I didn't shut the door, and I'm like, shut up. Yeah, like yeah. no, I didn't shut the door. <laughs> it's just some like really like cliche paranormal horror moments happen very naturally in that game. And like the the promise of the tech there is like quite impressive and interesting. Like being able to talk to you know voice boxes and have the ghost respond and write on uh, pads of paper. Yeah. And I don't think it looking like a you know a Steam asset flip really takes away from it. It kind of adds this little charm to it. Maybe um, I feel like it was the perfect storm of 2020. Everyone was just looking for something to play with friends. Yeah. I think there's quite a few games which really benefited from the social desperation. And I reckon Phasmophobia totally. maybe wouldn't have been found if it wasn't for this year. Yeah, I wonder. But really, really nice, charming surprise. Loved my time with Phasmophobia. Unique and a pretty clever game. I'm really confused now. and trying to figure out where... What was I doing right at the end of October that I wasn't playing? Maybe I was doing the... I thought you were place. busy. I swear maybe you were busy. Was- doing the like i think i might have been doing the watchdogs following people videos mm, i think i might have been maybe. grinding those out those were published right at the what, end of right at the beginning sense. of november yeah because i definitely wasn't like away from anything you know yeah. uh um yeah i sort of am a little sad i missed out on that but uh i still was able to get a bit of a bit of enjoyment out of it yeah and, as uh, soon as that game's like updated i'm i'm down Oh, definitely, yeah, yeah. It's 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 really neat, and I was just looking at thirty one thousand people playing it at this exact second. Wow! And one hundred and twelve thousand was their peak. That's uh, pretty that's impressive. insane. That yeah, insane. it's getting like thirty to forty thousand players at, or you know, concurrent peak players every day. So they have there's a lot of people still playing this game. That and Among Us was a really fun time, just for uh, I don't know zero to hero stories of these one to two man teams made this game that. 
initially yeah. was completely ignored and then blew up. It was it was nice. It's nice yeah. to have those stories yeah. for the game devs. Definitely, definitely. All right, well, my number nine. Mm-hmm. Truly the zero to hero story we've all been waiting for. <laughs> okay. Truly the biggest. Honestly, actually, I am un- un- unironically very surprised by this game. And I, I genuinely do like it. Hmm. Now, no one laugh because it's time to talk about bug snacks. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> bug snacks! Oh my god, what a year. This is not one of those games like Miles Morales where I was like, oh, I'll just put it on here because we, you know, so we can talk These about These are the best list stuff. we've ever done. I really do genuinely like bug snacks. Yeah, I liked um, it too. I know you don't like the gameplay parts of it and mm-hmm. I think I actually kind of weirdly do even though like it's one of those things where you look at it and it's like okay obviously this gameplay is like janky and frustrating and 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 repetitive but th- there's something that I like in games which will come up at least a few more times on my list where it's like I like when it feels like I'm sort of breaking things oh, yeah, and I know what you're saying Bug Snacks has that um, with the way you're supposed to catch things. I never really figured out if I was doing it right. I think I was, but it's like I'm gonna find the weird little one spot where I can put the trip wire on. Yeah, that's what and I get did. The perfect line, and I, I'm sure like for you it was probably annoying, um, but I weirdly like that in games, and it. The gameplay of Bug Snacks makes it f- made me feel like regularly like I was breaking things in a way that was funny <laughs> to me. Yeah. And I like that. Um, I think I was just looking for a bit more Viva Piñata, you know, where you really need right. to think about uh, what do you do for the banana? And they like they teased elements of, you know, using fire to get the Frost Boy. But mm-hmm. I found like for 95% of the uh, for the snacks post like mm, halfway through the game it was just tripwire after tripwire. Tripwire, like, yeah. I'm not really thinking about this anymore. Yeah, yeah. There were definitely some good ones, though, where you're like, how do I get this? And then you figure it out, and it was satisfying. But there's also, like, just an element of sort of randomness and jank to it that is... Yeah. Like the um, the weird taco, flaming, angry taco bugs in the desert that break up and chase you around like I never figured out exactly what their trick was aside from just like pissing them off and making them explode yeah uh, but that's okay the real charm for me of bug snacks is just how monumentally fucking weird bug snacks is <laughs> yeah and I love the tone of that game but also like it is genuinely likable mm-hmm. um the cast of characters are all really good yeah. They're all varied. They all have fun stories. They're all kind of fucked up as well. Like the yeah, voice actors really go for it. In that the game. people have issues. Yeah, and and sort of like I we talked about with Cyberpunk where it's like there's a lot of dialogue with some strange shit going on in this mm-hmm. game. And the voice actors are absolute pros. And if you look at the voice cast, they are all professional voice actors. Um like I think you know the voice of like Winston from Overwatch is one of the voice actors. Oh damn! Oh oh, and the uh, the guy that plays the Bunger was Ryder, male Alex Ryder in Mass Effect Andromeda. That was Fuck. one of the revelations. Wait, really? <laughs> yes, from <laughs> Alex Ryder. Oh, I'm Alex Ryder, or whatever he sounded like to Bunger. Bunger. But that's oh, his best role so far. Uh, it is, and Bunger. I mean, he's like a world phenomenon now. Yes. Um, but yeah, the the voice cast all does does a great job with this. Mm-hmm fucking ridiculous story and um but i think my favorite part of it is just the personality of the bug snacks (laughs) they uh they made this game just made me laugh at its weirdness Mm -hmm. so much and and i i still think of the bunger and it makes me laugh it makes me my day brighter (laughs) whenever i think of the bunger or uh what are some of the other ones? The Scoopy Banoopy flying through the <laughs> through the trees. And, uh, it's just, I. It's nice to play a game every now and get and every now and then that is just, it's just so weird, mm-hmm. and it's so committed to that weirdness. Like when you go into the mountain and you find the weird 
snack golem that's like this horrifying creature of snacks of like pizza yeah. arms and and when you do like full body conversions of some of the people and there's, there's honestly, just so um, oh. there's, there's like elements of this game which remind me of frog fractions i obviously oh, never sure. got to enjoy the reveal of frog fractions where it kind yeah. of uh you know just spins on its head into a different game entirely with a different narrative yeah. and tone and theme and Bug Snacks, I've always wanted to play one of those games, and I'm not saying that Bug Snacks is fully that committed to that, you know, whatever, that novelty. Yeah. But there are elements of Bug Snacks where you assume it's a Pixar adventure, and then it gets like kind of dark and twisted in a way where I really oh, yeah. reveled in it. I was so excited. I remember at the beginning, I was like, oh, I hope this uh, turns into a horror game. I've always wanted to play a game which is disguised as a horror game. And I'm not saying it's quite that, but there's like elements there. And I was like kind of excited by uh, some of the twists the tone takes. There's definitely some stuff in the game that also triggers, um, what's that, you know, tri uh, tri tryptophobia or whatever yeah, it is. The holes. Yeah, with the irregular shapes in, na na in nature that mm. just trigger like deep. There's just something like sometimes where you, you just turn everyone into a, into pizza and you're just like, this is just so corrupted i hate it <laughs> oh that game is great and then you know afterwards i discovered that you can like do horrible shit like force feed gramble <laughs> and turn him into a fucking bug snacks against his will while he's sleepwalking like it's that just is... <laughs> that it's game so is dark up. yeah like, uh, uh, yeah but yeah there is a scene was... from the yeah. first day i played that game um, you know, you think you know what you're getting when you turn on bug snacks. You make assumptions. <sighs> yeah. And then I heard Gramble scream at a guy yelling, that's why your wife left you. And I was like, what <laughs> am I playing right now? And that really set the scene for where bug snacks would go. Yeah. It's yeah, not it as kid-friendly me... as you think that game is. It really is. Oh, no, no. And it took me a couple of sittings to really start to love it. Mm -hmm. But in it, like right out of the gate, you know, it was such a meme from that first trailer that I was thinking like, ah, it's not gonna be, you know, I'll, I'll laugh at it and I'll never complete it, but, and that was sort of how I thought initially. But after yeah, a certain point, I was like, I really like want to see this through and see what happens with the story and see what the characters get up to and also see all their other dumb and funny jokes. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it was just, it's probably, let me just check my list here. It's, oh yeah, it's definitely the most unique thing on this list. <laughs> It it really feels like a dreams project that yeah it does came to life and yeah. came to a of you know PlayStation Plus and uh, it is by no means a great showcase of PlayStation Five technology, <laughs> but it is still a weird and wonderful little video game that uh, I uh, very much enjoyed and also hated. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. I think it we is. expected like another knack, didn't we? And it kind of yeah, uh, it's Knack doesn't yeah. really stand on its own past the memes, but Bug Snacks does. I think so. I think Bug Snacks is genuinely worth playing. Yeah, you may not like it, but I think it's it needs to be seen. I think it is a much better game than Octodad as well. I think mm -hmm. Octodad is a hilarious joke, and the first three levels are amazing, uh, but it just sort of falls apart. Uh, whereas this feels much more. Like, they nailed it. They kept the joke up all the way through, and it's funny yeah. all the way through. I would uh, say I yeah. found Bug Snacks genuinely funny. Not just ironically funny. Like, yes. some of the lines were well written to the point where it really got a good laugh out of me. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It, it balances the mixture of humor of, like, there's, you know, there's an early joke where, like, the farmer guy's like, you go on ahead and I'll catch up. And I'm like, okay, I appreciate this type of humor. I appreciate those dumb jokes. But then there's also a type of humor, oh. too, which is just, like, it's just absurdist humor mm -hmm. uh and i am really into that and uh bunger will live on in my heart until the day <laughs> i die every time i make a hamburger now i'm gonna think bunger good old bunger oh the bunger okay <laughs> wow this is gonna be the biggest juxtaposition of video games uh, we've ever discussed i'm into it <laughs> from bug snacks to something that we are not going to talk about a lot because it okay. had the worst discourse of the year. And that is The Last of Us Part 2. 
similarly miserable story games, I would yeah. think. Yeah. <laughs> it was tempting to leave this off the list, but I know that I would have been lying to myself if I didn't put this somewhere on my list. Yeah, I would have been surprised if it wasn't on your list. Yeah, because the too long didn't listen of our like three hour chat on The Last of Us 2 is I really like playing The Last of Us 2. I replayed mm -hmm. the first game right before I jumped into 2, so I really climatized to the shooting and the stealth pretty quickly. I enjoyed the heaviness of the combat. I enjoyed the more open nature of the levels, even though there was only one of the proper open, open levels. Uh, there was still more to explore in each sector of Last of Us 2 compared to Last of Us 1. Uh, I'm, I've got a soft spot for environmental puzzles. I know I do. I don't know why. It's my boomer brain. I just kind of like the easygoingness of simple environmental puzzles. Um, I liked the world building, seeing more of the Last of Us lore and world. And I weirdly enjoyed the events in Abby's Half. Mm -hmm. uh, I know that's like probably the most controversial opinion I have of the game. But I just liked what happened. Um, but, you know, long story short, I have probably as many problems as everyone else with the narrative and format of The Last of Us 2. Uh, I kind of disagree with people when they're like, the format was a completely terrible decision. I'm all for weird, risky format changes. I always wish I was around during the Metal Gear Solid days oh. to see the second one come out. I know. I understand, like, the rage that must have been going on when, uh, is it R Raiden? Raiden? Raiden, yeah, Raiden, Raiden. You, yeah. you play as him Raiden. rather than Snake Raiden. for the majority of the game. Man, I wish I was, I uh, like, invested in that series and there to I see I wish that. I wasn't nine when it came out. <laughs> like, what a mad decision for that franchise. Oh, Kojima, you crazy son of a bitch. So, I'm, I'm down. I'm down for yeah. the idea of The Last of Us Part Two, but I just don't think they got it right. Um, I'm not going to go much deeper than that. There's moments of the story which are so borderline illogical that they just... <laughs> just doesn't make sense some of it and it it just doesn't come together in a way that makes it feel worthwhile yeah um and i say i like playing all of the game um I, it really lost me at santa barbara as well uh it was just too much like just no when to put a bow on it um and even though i enjoyed like four out of five of the pillars that make up a video game for the last first part two uh this franchise for me is built on its narrative and i think a lot of people would agree that's why they like this franchise, or at least like the first one. And it just didn't really, uh, it didn't get it right for me. Mm. Um, so yeah, I think that's all I want to say, since we did a four hour chat almost on it. Uh, but I, I really enjoyed most of my time with this game. I didn't enjoy the way the internet reacted to it. I didn't even no. enjoy the way the people who made the game reacted nope. to it. Nope. Um, but yeah, uh, let's move on. Let's move on. Yeah. I had uh, a lot of good times with The Last of Us Part 2, but it really missed out for me uh, where it mattered. It should be yeah. higher up the list. It should be higher up. Yeah, it's probably... The only thing I would say is it's probably like the most disappointing game and release of the year for me. Oof, uh, and Cyberpunk came out. Yeah, I mean, I like Cyberpunk. Um, yeah. I, I, I would... Yeah, it's the most disappointing game in quite a long time because I really do like that first game a lot. And uh, yeah, it was, it was a bummer. It was... I hope they can get me back with their next game. And I hope yeah. their next game isn't The Last of Us Part 3. Because <laughs> that won't get me back. Yeah. I mean, I'll play that, you know, obviously, because I love to suffer. But, uh... Yeah. 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 I don't know what they do next to that franchise. I... Christ. I think the future hope... of Last of Us is up there with, like, whatever Bethesda games do next. Like, yeah. I can't wait to see what the hell that is. Ugh. Because it sold so well. And the critical oh, reception yeah. was amazing. The only backlash <laughs> yep. was from, you know, and the it's... internet. And why would they give a shit when they have their money? Oh, yeah. And, I mean, they think, the you know, everyone that said anything bad about The Last of Us is uh, an idiot. Yeah, so, and a bigot, you know. so. And they know that. They believe that in their souls, so. Speaking of souls, haha, Demon Souls, number eight. Surprise, we're moving on. There we go. It's the only <laughs> way to do it. <laughs> yeah, you got to do it. Uh, Demon's Souls. Mm. So the world might be mended. So the world uh, might be mended. We haven't I talked about this game at all. No, we haven't. Mm. Um, and like Bug Snacks, this is the PlayStation segment for me, by the way. This whole this, <laughs> yeah. this, this is just all PlayStation. Um, like Bug Snacks, I like when, like I said, uh, it's fun when I break a video game. And, <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, I had heard legends of 
the magic being, you know, quote unquote, the easy way to play this video game. Mm -hmm. um, I am not a big FromSoft person, although I obviously like Bloodborne a lot. I <laughs> would probably like Bloodborne more if I could uh, just like fly around as a floating drone. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, and then all the other Souls games, I have never been able to enjoy. I have tried all of them and I've never made it far into any of them. Uh, just, it's just, you know, just that game feel, that nebulous game feel just doesn't click for me. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm not much of a sucker for punishment either. So with <laughs> Demon Souls, you know, it was like the, the, the PlayStation 5 launch game, um, the most complete thought of a game there, and the most visually and technically impressive, and those areas are amazing. It, it, it really does look exceptional from start to finish. They, mm -hmm. Blue Point did an amazing job of remaking this game to a fault. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I commend their art team, and their sound design is incredible. Oh, man. It adds so much when you have great sound design. Oh. And it, it yeah, it, it, it is a tremendous showcase of, uh, of a launch hardware and is a, a very good and well-made game, but it has, and I, it is fascinating how it has aged, I think. Yes. And, um, yeah. but yeah, so anyways, I, I went in, you know, I went in expecting to play a few hours and then bounce off of it. But I, you know, at least to be able to run around and look at the visuals and be like, Ooh, this is pretty. And I, but I, I tried to play magic. I went magic knowing that, you know, hopefully it would be somewhat easier <laughs> Little did I know that um, the magic, especially when you do what I did, which was keep a wiki handy for most of it, mm -hmm. um, which I really liked doing. It was fun to be able to uh, decipher all the parts of Demon Souls as you come across them, because a lot of parts in this game are uh, like just batshit incomprehensible. Um, yeah. including, you know, the very first thing where you have to talk to a specific child buried <laughs> up somewhere. Uh, like, I spent... I had to look up, like, three guides to figure out where it was. <laughs> Anyways. So stupid. It's so dumb. There's so much dumb shit like that that I love, but... It, so, I may, I play I play Magic with a wiki, and, oh my god, <laughs> does it ever break Demon Souls in a way that I found incredibly funny <laughs> I, demon souls made me laugh quite a few times uh which i really never would have expected that uh the first half was uh, maybe like yeah i would say probably the first 10 hours it was you know I, I felt like the balance was good like magic was definitely easier but i was still having to play and think uh for myself and then <laughs> after yeah. a certain point and the firestorm spell it just becomes ridiculous in a way that was really entertaining. And uh, I had a great time wandering around Demon Souls, looking at all the ways in which it is like this strange, ancient thing uh, with that from, from has come a long ways in a short time mm -hmm. um, with their design. And I enjoyed looking at it. And listening to it and looking at there's some weird environments in that game. Like it get it's sort of like tame. Parts of it are pretty are tame, but then you get to like the Valley of Defilement and yeah. the, all of Latria is just extremely Oh, I love that place. Latria is wonderful. Um the castle, the whole of Bol Boletaria is just like the best castle environment oh, ever oh in a God. game. It's incredible. Um and yeah. I would I heard tales of a couple of boss fights that were people said were hard. And, uh, well, the final boss fight took three seconds. <laughs> literally. Uh, it literally took three seconds. I've seen it. It was it's pretty, uh... The, the only... F maybe I'll, I'll throw that clip in here. Um, it was the only fight in the entire game that I one-shot the boss. And <laughs> it was hilarious. I stood there. I, I sat there and laughed. Um, and yeah. It, but also just sort of, like, academically as a piece of sort of yeah. Archaeology, right? Oh, it's, it's, yeah. It's really neat to look at it and 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 be like, okay, you can see, like, all the pieces are here, and you can see the parts that they removed and why they removed them, like the world tendency stuff or yeah. the emphasis on world tendency stuff. Um, and you can see that they really got a lot better at enemy variety and uh, move sets and boss design, boss like boss, boss encounter. Design. 
the bosses are not great in this. Mm. Um, I didn't really know what their move sets were because they didn't have time to crack them out. To be fair to the bosses, <laughs> yeah. but watching you play, it was like, oh yeah, like most of the bosses, if they have a move set, they have like three moves, mm-hmm. right? And whereas all their other games, it's like you can fight a, uh, the same boss for thirty hours and he'll still crap, but crack out a, a move on you uh, that you've never seen before. And there were some really bad gimmick fights in this that I did not like at all. Mm-hmm. And uh, and yeah, so I'll, I'll throw it over to you. You're the Souls expert. Um, I liked Demon Souls a lot because I broke it so much that it was it was genuinely comedic. Um, and yeah, that's Demon Souls. <laughs> we will we will get there. Okay. We will get there. I figured. Yeah. Uh, moving on, eh? Yes, sir. Number eight for you, I think. Yeah. My number eight. Uh, I almost forgot this game came out this year because early access is a weird thing, and then mm. the game comes out and then it comes out for a second time. But my number eight is Deep Rock Galactic. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, I knew that would be here. Uh, Deep Rock Deep Rock Galactic is a really, really awesome game. Um, I really love the aesthetic of Deep Rock Galactic. Uh, I've always weirdly enjoyed mining in games there's something like therapeutic and mesmerizing about just digging away i don't know what it is i mean yeah. people are still playing minecraft this many years later we're still playing minecraft everyone's still playing minecraft and sometimes yeah. just looking for diamond like the most boring part of that game just digging away at blocks there's something about it just not knowing yeah. what's on the other side i like mining and this game just does it really well i love the sound design i love the music and uh, this game has great tone and a comedic flair to it. It does a really good job of the hub world, uh, the bar in Deep Rock Galactic. Probably one oh, of the, the greatest things put into a hub world ever. Where if you haven't played the game, uh, part of the character progression and unlocks is just unlocking different beers with strange effects. They can like, shrink your player down, <laughs> balloon them. Turn, t- turn your farts into explosions. Turn your farts into explosions, teleport you outside, and... This game has some of the greatest interactions with strangers. I do think this game is obviously very fun with your friends. Uh, The perfect storm is playing with one or two friends and then having at least one stranger amongst the group. Uh, This game, uh, there is another game on my list that does good interactions with strangers, but um, multiplayer gaming with strangers has got pretty bad across the years. Yeah, Uh, People are shit. (laughs) <laughs> and that's all I have to say. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it takes a certain like feel, a, a certain like objective in a game to make people not be assholes. Uh, and Deep Rock Galactic has a great way of making people cooperate. Uh, and it also does a great job of making you able to communicate without mics. Because thank God that there is no mics in Deep Rock Galactic. Actually, that's not that's not correct. You can talk in a mic, but no one does because you don't need to. And you don't really want a human behind the strangers. You just want it to be this little dwarven man who's doing his job. Uh, and this game has a really great uh, like matchmaking system. It has all these lobbies open. Uh, the progression in the game is good. You always have something to pursue and seek out. So you can log on anytime, uh, regardless of if you are with your friends. Uh, you know, find a couple of little things to tick off the list. Uh, look at the lobbies, jump in with strangers. And you have this really like organic, cooperative experience with people you've never met and you can't even talk to. Uh, and I think that is the game's greatest strength. Uh, apart from that, the gameplay is fun. Uh, even the shooting is not bad. You know, for a little uh, Left 4 Dead kind mm. of uh, system, it's not bad. Um, and it's just just a well-designed little cooperative thing. It does the pro- progression loop really well. You can play this game for as long as you want. A good variation in the four characters great tone uh you can kind of play this game forever i like it yeah great music as well I think oh I yeah great soundtrack yeah the soundtrack is excellent uh and the whole visual design is is wonderful and i uh i think the one thing that kept me from really getting into it and maybe i still will um was just uh, there was just i felt like there was just a tiny bit too repetitive and i mean that's I know, there is, yeah. you know, you know me. I, I like, I, I, it's dumb for me to say that when I play, you know, Destiny. Um, <laughs> yeah. But there was just, there was just the one little. Th- I'm not sure what it needs for me to like hook, but it's like so close to hooking me because yeah, 
like you said, there is a lot of... I was really surprised by how much variety and uh, perks and skills mm -hmm. and progression there is. Um, it's something that I think uh, GTFO would really benefit from yeah. to, to make that compelling. And a few other games like that, that they, they need to have progression. And uh, they really nailed it in that. And uh, uh, yeah, it was... It's a, it is a wonderful little game. Yeah. I don't really have anything to say about it. Yeah, there's honestly not too much going on in that game, which I think is no. another positive of it. It's very easy to grab and learn quickly, and you can just make your own objectives. I think there's like hard raids, which I've never even bothered looking into. Yeah, You can prestige like... in that game like 10 times if you want. Wow. We did encounter a few people that had played a lot of Deep Rock mm -hmm. Galactic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's one of those games where it's flexible. You can play it on a hard mode where it turns into a sweat fest, very similar to the Left 4 Dead stuff. Or you can go for like an easy round to put on a podcast. And uh, that's yeah. what I did for quite a lot of it, honestly. Good game. That is my number eight. Excellent. Uh, my number seven is the last of the PlayStation 5 stuff. Oh, wow. Astro's Playroom. Nice. Wow. Now, it's a, it's a little game. It's a pack-in, free. It's only got like, I don't know, 90 minutes of content in it. Mm -hmm. well, that's, maybe a little more. If you, if you go for 100%. Uh, but of all the games on the PlayStation 5, this is the one that I wanted to play more of the most. I like. A, yeah, I me too. want like a 30-hour full-sized Astro platformer on the PS5. They it really would be should do it. Incredible, and I, I would be surprised if they didn't because the reception to this was oh. was amazing, and it was deserved because it is it is essentially a tech demo, really. Um, yeah. of the tech in the PS5 and it is a tremendous tech demo um, but I think the the things that make me love it is first of all it it just plays great like it does actually yeah the the not a lot of I don't like a lot of 3d platformers because it just there's just always just a tiny bit of disconnect for me mm -hmm. um, with how it feels to how my brain wants it to feel and Astro nails it I think it's it's super snappy. Uh, which is a big part of why I want there to be more of it. Uh, I would love if, even if they did like DLC time trial levels, because there's only really four um, time trial levels in there, and they're awesome. They're amazing. Mm -hmm. um, it just is a tremendous feeling game to play. But the real reason I think it's so high, and the reason I would want to play so much more of it, is just it's just got such a wonderful personality. Yeah. Um, and, and I knew this already, you know, because Astro's been around for a while. He was there at the PS4 launch. Um, and then obviously the VR game is is really excellent. Uh, it, it, it is more adorable because of the VR. You know, you're sort of oh, man, more I want immersed it. in it. Um, but it's just got, it's just so bursting with personality. Every square inch of it has so much stuff that makes me happy. It's the game that made me the happiest the most this year. It's just <laughs> yeah. like... It's just delightful. It's it just really got this is. like chaotic energy to it as well. It, it's the spirit is just like this little bit of like shitty eating chaotic grin to it as well. <laughs> just a little bit, you know. Yeah. And um, there are just so many cute little references and little interactions. And I think chasing the tro the platinum trophy is really good because you. Uh, are sent looking for a few more of these little interactions and you get you see like every nook and cranny of the game if you chase down the platinum um nice. and it was really worth doing and i i really i really liked it and it is also like the best usage of the dual sense yeah, by wow. a huge huge margin yeah it is amazing amazing and mm -hmm. i like i don't love the motion control you know robots that you get into Oh, okay. um, just because I don't really like motion control. That's fair. Um, but the usage of triggers and touch pattern and stuff makes up for that. But um, yeah, it was just... It just really made me want a lot more Astro. Yeah. Um, if we had a, a Mario Odyssey, but Astro would be like the best game of the year. Like yeah. that would legitimately maybe be a game of the year contender oh, for yeah. me. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um... And I mean, like, this is number seven on my list, and it's like a three-hour pack-in tech demo. Like, that that's how good Astro is, really. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, it's just so good at everything it does, and is just beautiful. It's got a, a hilarious and amazing soundtrack. The GPU and SSD songs are catchy as hell. <laughs> yeah. It actually and... was my number ten 
But then yeah. I did remember about Phasmophobia and just had a bit more of a magical time with Phasmophobia. And like, you know, yeah. the, the length of the game being short. But I agree. For sure. I fully agree. It's it's wonderful. It's a it's a delightful, wonderful little game. It's like the most I, charming uh, thing I think I've ever played. Yeah, and I really needed that. <laughs> and also for me, it was like yeah. a little bit sentimental. Uh, I right. played it by accident in chronological order. Uh, for people who don't know, there's four oh, yeah. main levels, and they are all themed around uh, all four of the PlayStations, leading up to obviously the reveal of the PS5. So one level's PS4, three, two, and one. And I just, by accident, played them, you know, in mm -hmm. reverse chronological order, 4, 3, 2, 1. And that is the only, like, consistency I've had in gaming throughout my life, is I've owned every mm. single PlayStation system. And, you know, I'm not going to say I, like, weeped over video game consoles, but, you know, yeah. if there's one thing I could paint out, like, my childhood, childhood up to my, like, adulthood, it's kind of the PlayStation, which is... Either sad or not, I'm not, I'm not yeah. sure. But it was it was nice and sweet, you know, to have this yeah. really charming platformer and then to just have all these memories slowly trickle in. Like, the more I played, the further I went, the older the references got. And I was like, oh, fuck, I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> there is a lot of love and care put into all the references in here. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I don't have much nostalgia for PlayStation stuff, but it's just packed to the brim with it. And I know, yeah, you, you had said that in a... In, hearing people that have been around and in tune with PlayStation for a long time, they said similar things where it's just like, it's like really affecting. Yeah, it is. Uh, which oh. is cool. Yeah, it's, 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 it's a game that is just bursting at the seams with like joy and delight and love for the PlayStation brand and also just for being clever and creative. Mm. Like it just, it's always doing little things. Uh, they're just even in the lobby, you know, you can, you can, double jump on the glass and the the big robot fish pulls out a little handkerchief and polishes the glass and you punch <laughs> the glass he'll punch the glass and send you flying and you can run around there and punch every single uh, other bot in the room and they all follow you and stuff happens and there's just yeah. so many little things like that throughout where it's it just like a, this tiny tiny interaction that adds so much personality it's way too good for what it's made for yeah yeah <laughs> basically way too yeah, good yeah like you hear tech demo pack in and you're like the expectations are basic mm -hmm. and uh it is w yeah for a free it is literally one of the best things you can play on a playstation 5 and it is free and included with every playstation 5 uh, so, it, so, it's, um, it's amazing it's good to build up anticipation for the potential of the uh dual sense controller as well yeah, and I think it's a great demo to developers mm -hmm. to be like, here is how effective it can be when it's used really well. Yeah. And uh, it's it's used really well in that game, and it's uh, a wonderful little thing. It is. God, I love that thing. Uh, my number seven is Demon's Souls. Mm. Uh, I, I liked Demon's Souls quite a lot. Yeah. Uh, one thing I did like is just obviously the technical side of it. I feel like um, we've been waiting to kind of merge the Sony 4K crazy graphical fidelity stuff with 60 frames per second consistently and smoothly. Yeah. And playing Demon's Souls was kind of like, oh, it's finally happened and this is what it looks like. Uh, turns out it looks pretty fucking good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's one of the smoothest looking things I've ever played. And technically it's not. I've played stuff that is higher than 60 frames per second, but there's just something about seeing it in that context, which is just... <sighs> wow. The fidelity of everything God. at 60 FPS, and the 60 F FPS being, like, unflinching, just mm -hmm. perfect. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there is something about it with the animations and the particles and the lighting quality and just the quality of visuals at that frame rate, at that resolution, that uh, really makes it look better than it probably actually does yes look. i don't yes. yeah and i'm not sure what it is I, I also think um you might not have got this as much since you were playing with magic but uh i actually thought the um the rumble all that stuff added quite a bit it's obviously not as good as astrobot i think you mentioned this in the podcast that uh developers probably need to all play astrobot to even understand what they can do but i i had some genuine moments in this game where i could feel a large enemy in front of me uh, before i could see him and it was hmm. really like interesting and different uh, to just feel an imposing force and be like, what the hell is that? I feel something in my hands, but I don't see it with my eyes. It was 
It was it was a cool tech thing. And I think what the dual sense does better than anything is just make uh, it makes the game feel weighty and heavy. And I think combining that with the smoothness, it was just one of the most AAA feeling things ever. It just felt so weirdly expensive. And by by weirdly, I mean it's Demon yeah. Souls. That's the thing that, yeah, we forgot to mention, like, the original Demon's Souls is one of the most butt-ugly games ever made, yeah. and it is, like, the pinnacle of weird, like, C-tier Japanese <laughs> strange game, right? I mean, that yeah. is, like, the king of cult classics, and it is, it's been transformed into the most triple-A thing in years, Yet. and, it, the, yeah, the dichot the, 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 the gap, the gulf between them is uh, really like we we tried to figure out a game that would have a similar gulf in quality that, and it's it's hard to think of one. <laughs> yeah, it really is. Because that's how ugly the original Demon Soul. <laughs> yeah. No, sorry to all the From Software artists out there, but like they've come a long way. It's been a yeah. Oh, but yeah, they really have. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, when it comes to the gameplay, uh, I was actually quite pleasantly surprised by um, the level design. Um, just the general exploring of the world and the areas. Um, I don't remember my initial playthrough of the game, which is obviously back in 2009 or 10, I can't remember. Uh, so I don't have the strongest memories of it, but I thought that part of the game might be a bit weaker. Uh, but I thought the levels were pretty good, honestly. They are a little bit more straightforward, but there's still exploration, there's still different ways to go, secrets to be found. The uh, I didn't really get to play around with the world tendency stuff that much. But I have read into that, like how it affects the worlds, and that's actually pretty uh, unique and novel to Demon's Souls. Like Dark Souls doesn't really have that stuff, and it's yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, the thing that stood out to me about the level design, um, and it's sort of a positive and negative, is that it doesn't feel like the levels are made for a third-person action game. <laughs> okay. It, they like like. And I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. It, they feel less like video game levels and more like weird actual levels that like you would navigate as a human being like i can think of latria mm -hmm. or some of the castle areas where it's like i can't swing a sword without it hitting the walls <laughs> right 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 and it sucks well you but actually it's can also... kind of go you can kind of cheese and use that to your advantage if you know how right but it also makes it like claustrophobic and confusing in a way that's interesting mm -hmm. so there's this interesting sort of like They've gotten better at, I think, balancing that, where it's like a lot of the later games, they still don't feel like levels in a, in, in a way. They, they, or they just, but they've gotten better about, you know, maybe, maybe pushing things out a little bit so that like you can see, so that the <laughs> camera doesn't, yeah. just, you know, isn't completely unusable. There is a few camera moments that were rough. It's not to say that From Software's camera is perfect no. by any means anymore still, but uh, there were a few times where I'm like, man, this would be like a really interesting level in a first-person game, like Latria, especially. Yeah. To like all these tight, tight corridors. Uh, that was, anyways, go on. That was just my one little note I remembered about uh, level design. Yeah, but um, I think in the future, uh, w with whatever Blue Point does next, I just want them to be more comfortable and confident with changing things that suck. Because <laughs> yeah. there are certain things in this game which really suck. Uh, yeah. I think like an easy example is the weird part where it says press forward and circle to mantle, but then sometimes you don't need to do that. So that you mantle and then roll <laughs> off the edge of a cliff. There's like one famous spot in Latria, which like everyone on the internet has died this one fucking spot because it's just it's just jank and weird. And I'm sure there's some souls people who would be like, well, that's part of the storytelling. And that's OK. A better yeah. example is Dragon God. Dragon oh. God fucking blows. Terrible fight. Oh my it's terrible. God. It's not even a fight. Yeah, it There's sucks. just there. I just want Blue Point to just be a bit more confident because they did add some quality of life things into the game. So they're yeah. obviously not terrified of touching the legacy or whatever, the sanctity of these projects. Mm -hmm. uh, just, you know, maybe be, you know, a bit more com comfortable with changing a couple of things that suck in the game. Because the boss Yeah, or, or have like, you know, the, the remake mode where it's just like... Here's your precious. We did it. We did all the graphics, and mm. here's it's untouched aside from that. And then have like the here you are as a new 2020 player. We made the game like much more modern in mm, its design yeah. and fix these. And but, right. I mean, you know, I'm sure that's an obscene amount of extra work, probably. But uh, yeah, 
Yeah. Because they're obviously going to get a lot more work. We'll be seeing them pretty oh, frequently. Yeah. Um, yeah, whatever they do next. I've you know heard a rumor it's going to be Metal Gear Solid, but who knows? The internet likes to talk. Yeah. Uh, you yeah, know, whatever. I'm excited to see what they do next. Uh, Metal Gear Solid would be kind of boring because it would just be like, it's just, an, it's just a movie. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I've never played it. I'd be interested. <laughs> no, I haven't either. Actually, you're right. Uh, but yeah, the uh, the bosses in the game aren't very good. No. Uh, obviously, it's not a thing I remember. But um, yeah, they're not. They're just not good. They're really no. easy, or they have a strange gimmick, which uh, mostly is okay to read. Like Tower Knight is kind of obvious. Dragon God, I completely misread and thought I had to do something else <sighs> yeah. and was getting. I thought I had to make him break the uh, the giant stone the pillars, pillars in the way. Because yeah. I didn't assume that my little halberd or whatever I was using could smash through a giant, you know, piece of marble. But yeah, normally you would put, like, a broken pillar in the hallway leading up to that, right? That you'd have to break. You'd have to figure out what the trick is with mm. the pillar, right? They would, like, do some game design around it to teach you that before yeah. you get there. But and once in this he, is just like, like, killed me nope. when he wasn't looking at me and his eyes didn't go red or whatever. Yeah. Color. Yeah, uh, the bosses I just wasn't the biggest fan of. There was a couple I enjoyed... But even like the most challenging one, Flame Lurker, I, I like that guy was kicking my ass because he's weak to magic and I didn't know that and I was just poking him with a shitty weapon. And even after like 15 attempts, I was like, okay, if I stab him here, he gets like this little staggered animation. So he's interrupted. Mm -hmm. And then like sometimes it just wouldn't work. And I just couldn't, I couldn't like get a consistent method down with Flame Lurker. And eventually I just kind of blagged it by rolling around quickly and hiding behind pillars and using and the screaming using the white sticky goo which oh uh, yeah that is a real item by the way you probably didn't see that i know i Jesus did Christ. I, I, yeah yeah but yeah just uh you know they they kept it the way it was and from software had just come onto the scene and demon souls is a pretty damn good stab at whatever you want to call you know the from software yeah, genre whatever this is now yeah. yeah for first time like it's really really impressive stuff uh but blue point just if it sucks just you know just just make it less it. suck. Just make it less sucky. It's fine. Like, if yeah. people complain about it, go play the old fucking game. It's a remake. Yeah, it's I mean, like, people are so uptight. Like, people were still complaining about, like, the art in this. And it's like, oh, they've completely lost all of the art and the regalness. And it's like, who fucking... Of course they have. It's a. It's like a 10-year-old game. It like, like it, it's going to look different. Like, get over it. Yeah. Go play the PS3 game at 12 <laughs> FPS. Yeah, fuck off. <laughs> Uh, but, I, but I liked it. I liked it. It is yeah. not uh, high up on my list of From Software stuff, but it was like a, a cute, like you said, look down memory lane at where all these designs started. And there's value in that for me. Um, I'll, I'll probably play it a second time because getting overpowered in the game is pretty satisfying. But yeah, the bosses are just anticlimactic. I beat the last boss first time, and it was not you, difficult. Like at you didn't all. even break a sweat. Like, no, I, I barely got hit by the guy. He's very slow and deliberate. It was funny. You were thinking like, all right, next phase, and it's like there isn't a single second phase of any boss in this yeah. game. Yeah, they yeah. have like three moves, and that's it. Yeah, the uh, the bosses are too easy or too novel and strange and gimmicky. And yeah, yeah, it's not that difficult of a game. One other thing that I, I um, was kind of a large complaint for me um, is that there's the way the world tendency stuff works means that you're basically never able to summon or invade mm. because you're always dead, right? Yeah. And that's, I only summoned once in my whole game and the guy sucked and got killed. Yeah, I didn't even try it. Um, and. It, that makes me sad because I love that stuff. I love that stuff a lot. And the, uh, uh, the you I know. I did not. What? <laughs> I did not like people invading my game in Demon's Souls. Oh, I don't like the invasion so much. But again, I have magic, so it, it doesn't matter. I, I got killed multiple um, times with giant AoE magic. And I was like, well, that was fun. Good fight. I like the summons in okay. particular. Okay. Um, you don't I need still think them, invasion. Though, really. <laughs> no, you, oh, no, you don't. No, not at all. <laughs> yeah. But they make for great moments. Like I've, True. I've, like when I beat Bloodborne, I, I would poke at it, and every boss that I got to after I came back to it, I was just like, I'm just gonna summon, mm -hmm. and it was great. And we would get like little story. Like I kept summoning one guy for this one fight, and you know they were not an English speaker based on the messages they sent afterwards. But it, you know you summon him for like an hour, and we're struggling, and then he. And then I send, you know, he messages me and says, like, congratulations. And it's like, oh, this is great. And you just don't have any of that here. Um, I did have one good summon 
uh, sorry, invasion experience where I was on one dash one right at the top of the steps as you go towards ah. the um, phal phalanx. Mm -hmm. And we had like a nice little standoff where he stood at the bottom of the stairs, I stood at the top, and we did like a couple of <laughs> emotes to each other. Yeah. And then I think I do, I think that was the only fight I won. I think I won two out of like the eight times I got invaded. <laughs> yeah, and then I was also only invaded once. I got invaded a bunch. Uh, and I used magic on them, and they got fucking crispy creamed out of there, which is good vibe. <laughs> yeah. Fucking um, magic. Absolutely man. obliterated. I hate those but people. I like I but I do like how much there's some amazingly trolly bullshit in this game as well Is that it? I love. In particular, the invasion, the fact that there's a weapon, there are a few things that you can use oh, to yeah. just completely break everything that of the person you're invading. Like I'm, Yeah, I'm glad I didn't find that or get invaded it's so by fucked up. Like it's so fucked up. Yeah, like I our friend Andy. <laughs> yeah, like Andy lost everything. Andy got invaded early on. And someone used the scraping spear or the acid cloud on him, and all of his stuff broke, and it was all of his gear, and he couldn't afford to repair any of it, and he had to restart as a new character. <laughs> like, I think that's amazing. Me too. That is so I funny. love that. I love that. And there's, yeah, there's some good funny stuff. Like, there's a lot of moments in this game where you're like, okay, fuck you two from software. It has some good, like, unchecked-ness. Like, some stuff just went yes. unchecked and was just, like, chuck it out the door. And that's kind of yeah, funny. Yeah, and I think I think they've gotten better at sort of finding the balance of like this is a trolly thing to do, but it's still like it's not bullshit. Mm -hmm. Whereas there's a lot of bullshit in Demon Souls that I think is very funny. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, they, good on them for doing it. Um, I really enjoyed Bloodborne. it. <laughs> it was it was my main you know PS5 exclusive that I dived into, enjoying those crispy sounds, the dual sense feels, the graphical smoothness. And also enjoying like a, a memory and also just like a lesson in a history of a franchise that yeah. I really, really like. Yeah, I think it's structurally an interesting game as well mm -hmm. compared to all the other Souls games. And uh, and it's a nice size. It's only It was only 20 hours for yeah, me. Yeah, me and too. It's a good length. 20 hours is a good length for a video game. And also um, it is sometimes nice not to pull your hair out, you know, at these games. Like, for sure. You know, Flame yeah. Lurker was uh -huh. the only boss I had like any trouble with. So it was kind of nice. Yeah. Oh, and Dragon, yeah, fucking I, God. I only got frustrated with uh, one, and all the others were easy. Yeah. And that was, it was nice to do that. Mm -hmm. It was sort of like playing it on the PC with Cheat Engine. <laughs> yeah. Except it was just on the PlayStation. It's all built in. They built Cheat Engine into the game. <laughs> yeah, Good on them. Yeah, Thank you, basically. From Software. Um, I, I was going to say that the PlayStation segment has ended for me, but I oh, realize God. actually it hasn't because the next game is still a PlayStation exclusive and is also a remake, but a much more fascinating remake, and that is Final Fantasy VII ah, Remake. Ah, nice, nice, nice. Um, I went into Final Fantasy VII Remake, well, actually, like two weeks before it was out, I wasn't even didn't even think I was going to play it because mm. I didn't think I cared at all. But then obviously... Uh, the way things went at the end of March and early April, by the time it came out, mm -hmm. I was like, I have to give this game an honest try because, oh my god, I need to play something to turn my brain off. Yeah. And um, so I, I went in and I, I decided to give it an honest try, and I'm glad I did because I ended up really quite enjoying Final Fantasy VII Remake, and we did a review roundup chat about it. Mm -hmm. I think that's like the first one we've actually talked about on the list so far. Um, way back when, a million years ago in April. And uh, yeah, I was really surprised by this remake. Be mm. Partially because it was one of those things that was in development for so long that I just figured it was never going to turn out good. Uh, but it it is. It really was one of those like mythical, you know, longevity yeah. things that I just you never thought were going to, you know, it's a Half-Life 3 type situation. It's like, this game's never totally. going to happen. And, and if it is going to happen, it's going to be a huge mess. And that's not to say that there aren't messy parts of Final Fantasy VII. I think there are a lot of parts of it that you can look at and be like, this is clearly a game that, you know, they they had some issues with. Yes. Um, there's some bad mission design, some bad quest design, some bad encounters. Um, Weird rendering? The Do you remember that? The scrapyards just aren't finished. Yeah. <laughs> or, yeah, I, I don't know if this game is going to come out on PC. I hope it does. Because I would be fascinated to see if those issues are still there. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Um, but, you know, the, also the issue of, like, the weird, not high-resolution skybox in that Yeah, level that's what I was is, referring to. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking of the giant scrap piles that look like they came out of 2000. 2000. Yeah, um, yeah, it's odd. But, 
The next one's Aside on PS5, all that... so that will help. Yeah. It should do anyway. Well, I I think it I think it's like a a one year exclusive to P PlayStation, but hmm. I I'm not sure. I I th I hope it comes out on PC. Um, yeah, that'd be nice. Because I would replay it, uh, especially at 60 FPS as well. I'm gonna have and, to because um, the story's already gone out the other ear. So. Well, yeah, that's the thing. So I think the um, I was surprised at how enjoyable the gameplay was. Yeah. The, I think the combat's actually really fun. Um, and there's a lot of variety to pick from and pick the characters that you like to play as. Um, and so the, the gameplay was fun. And then visually, you know, there's some inconsistencies for sure, but there are also a lot of visuals that are spectacular. Um, and then, but like the, the biggest surprise was just like, oh, the characters in this game are really good. Like they're really mm. lovable. Yeah. Uh, and it just had a really compelling and likable cast of characters. And, uh... As I said in the review, I was I was really into that game pretty much all the way up until the last, like, six hours, which were not fun for me. It does um, go off the rails pretty heavily. But, yeah, but then I did the research after beating it to to try and figure out what had happened. And I, it, I'm really looking forward to replaying it now with that, all that knowledge and appreciation of the fact that they fucking go for some shit in this game and I am super, super cool. into it. I'm super into how like batshit crazy this is and the fact that it's like not technically actually a remake. Uh it's like it's, well, I don't know. It's so it's so fascinating and it, it, it like this is the type of thing that I would if I had a game that I really adored deeply and was this like foundational amazing experience from the 90s. I would want them to fuck with me the way they fuck with me in this game. <laughs> yeah. Uh, because it's fascinating and bizarre. And uh, yeah, it was. it's the first Final Fantasy game that I've been able to like get into. I haven't tried to get into several, because, you know, Final Fantasy's been pretty absent for a long while now, I would say. It's a weird um, franchise, man. Sure is. Sure One of the is. Weirdest. It really is bizarre, but uh, yeah, it was just, it was nice to just play, and I, I like, once I got into it, I got into it, and it was nice to have like a 30-hour thing to play at that particular moment in, in the year as well, mm -hmm. uh, with just, just a nice cast of characters, fun combat, mostly good visuals, and some mostly good story that, you know, is, I, I like now, it's sort of like Death Stranding or something, where it's like, now that I'm just, I haven't played it for a while, I really like the ending. And actually, you know, when I, if I replay it, now understanding what's happening, I will probably feel a lot, lot better about the final few hours of that game, aside from the boss fights, though, which still sucked in the end. Like that, <laughs> that road boss fight was just, oh my god, just cut that from the fucking game. Like, it's so long. I just remember hating the house. Remember the fucking house? The hell house? The house, yeah, I, I didn't, like, it was just, like, the chip damage fight, because he has, like, a specific thing. And, yeah. But there's some great stuff in that game. Like, the whole, um... What's the what's the bar and club that you go to? The Honey Bee Inn, I think. The Honey Bee Inn. That whole sequence is so good. Yeah, a wall market. Oh, um, wall market is great. All of Wall Market. That's what I, I was trying to remember the name. That whole sequence is amazing. There's a lot of great stuff oh, in this yeah. game, and I and it left me like really looking forward to the next part or parts. Yeah. And to see not only to see the story and learn more of the characters, but also to see what wild shit they get up to. Mm -hmm. um, it is. The first, it is not the only game on this list that made me care about the story of a famous game that I normally wouldn't I, or have not cared about prior. Mm. <laughs> so they turned me into a Final Fantasy VII fan. So <gasps> good job. Ew. Well done. I hope it, I hope the next part is good and I hope it's not in 2025. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I agree. So that's my number six. Number six. All right. Uh, my number six will be very short and sweet because we have just posted a six hour discussion of it. <laughs> yeah, this this will have gone up already. My number six is Cyberpunk 2077. Uh, not gonna go down the rabbit hole again, but I am enjoying my time with it. I still haven't beaten the game. I'm like 70 something hours in. I will get back to it soon. Uh, and I really, really enjoy aspects of the game. I think Nice City is the best environment I explored of the whole year and that will probably stay relevant for quite a few years. But uh, yeah, it's got some issues and that holds it back from being higher. If you would mm -hmm. like to hear more, 
click this video here. <laughs> because boy, is there ever a lot more to hear. <laughs> yes, but uh, that was literally days ago. So I'm just gonna say it's my number six. I wish it yeah. was higher. Yeah. But still enjoyed it. Yeah. And still am enjoying it. That's it. Uh, well, I, I guess I'll do my number five then. Number five, um, baby. You said at the beginning of this video that there wasn't going to be a Nintendo game on here. Okay. You were wrong. Mm. This is also technically not from 2020. <gasps> Don't because you? number five, Ring Fit Adventure, came oh. out in November of 2019. <laughs> Ring Fit, okay. I, now, Ring Fit Adventure is not really... I mean, it is obviously a video game. Yeah. But it is not uh, the most compelling... It's a simple thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's an exercise video game. But, uh, yeah, Ring Fit Adventure was... Uh, you know, people spoke very highly of it at the end of last year. And I managed to get one at the end of January. It's a very 2020 up, game. I actually uh, think this is it, valid. It sure ended up being a good time to have sneakily purchased that. It was the year the for of, this game. Yeah. Got it at the end of January... And then by mid-March, it became like the hardest item ever to find. Mm -hmm. And I was extremely glad to have it because, you know, the basic concept is when you exercise, your brain feels good. Mm -hmm. you, you know, the brain really likes it when you do physical activity. Yeah. All sorts of chemical things happen. And um, that was a good thing to have access to this year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's for sure. Again. Yeah. Um, but I think Ring Fit Adventure is a legitimately great exercise product. Yeah, it really is. It is accessible and friendly and encouraging, which are very important things, I think, um, for exercise. Because a lot of the things surrounding exercise can be not like that. There's a lot of like elitism and I don't know. And going to the gym. Ugh. And going to the gym. Yeah, well, all, I mean, <sighs> fuck that. Was never going to go prior to 2020 and will never go after, obviously. <laughs> um, but yeah, there's just, there's like a lot of elements of like, oh, if you're not lifting 300 pounds, then you're a little shrimp. And it's like, fuck you. Like, yeah. fuck off. And Ring Fit is just like, it's almost, like, overly nice to you in terms of, like... It's like, you've done six minutes of exercise. Are you okay? Are you sure you don't need <laughs> yeah. to take a break? And it's like, yes. Yes, I'm fine. Thank you. Let's keep going. Though, I will say, every now and then, uh, after six minutes, like, when they trick you into doing a bunch of squats, oh, and you're like, yeah, you know what? I'm out. I'm done for today, <laughs> Ring Fit. Fuck you. Squats are nasty. You bastard. You the wide squats? Jesus. Yeah, well, I, I just have... I've been neglecting my ring fit for the last few weeks because of Cyberpunk and Christmas and, yeah, and just too. getting back into the swing of it now. And uh, the other day, I was tricked into doing wide squats after not doing any for a month, and I am feeling it still. Oh, uh, especially when it's a boss fight and you have to hold it. It's like, you uh, son of a bitch. My legs are hurting just thinking about it, and they're also <laughs> still hurting. Um, but yeah, it, it, has, it has been very beneficial for this year, yeah. I think. Yeah. Uh, you know, even even without the 2020 stuff, uh, yeah, it would have been good to have had, uh, anyways. Um, yeah, it's 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 the game that makes you you feel good goodest the most. <laughs> you know, it's like probably the best game I've ever played for my actual physical being. Yeah. You know, <laughs> because I do it regularly enough, and. It has helped a lot, and uh, but it is, I think, also just a, a super well-made, effective, fun, likable, uh, and addictive thing. To and I would never would have thought they'd be able to make an actually compelling exercise game that feels like exercise. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, surprisingly effective. That thing can knock the shit out of you. Oh yeah, yeah, and I think they they there is enough variety in there as well that you can keep everything you know you can spread around the load throughout the week right of like this is this is worn out my legs please don't make me do any more squats and you can not do any more squats you know you can mm -hmm. go into this area and do this and the i don't think the mini games are any good 
and I think there's too much talking. But yeah, aside that. from that, ah, you know, you can pick and choose pretty easily what you do and don't want to do. Like, I don't like the yoga exercises, so I don't do them. Yeah, and they don't really make you do them. You know, every once in a while, like maybe once every couple worlds, you have to do a fight with yoga moves, and it sucks. Because yoga sucks. And, uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and um, but it's, you know, it's, it's. I, I would love if they did like a an expansion pack that added more exercises. Yeah. But there, what's yeah. what's there is still covers enough ground that it doesn't get ever too boring or repetitive. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, I, I don't know what my playtime is up to, but um, I have no intentions of stopping using it anytime soon. And it, it has still it is still fun. It is still uh, and they they did a good job when you beat it. You go into basically new game plus. And they still have like new dialogue, and uh, you can everything. It it continues to scale, you know, and it has not. It does a good job of never getting too easy if you are upping the difficulty as you're going. And uh, yeah, it's a wonderful, wonderful thing, and I highly recommend. You know, if you're someone that doesn't like exercising uh, and you don't want to go to a gym or buy a I don't know, treadmill or recumbent bicycle or something. It's once you get into it, you know, 30 minutes, 40 minutes, an hour goes by really quickly mm -hmm. and it is, it, and it is effective. So good job, Nintendo. You, you, God, Nintendo is so annoying. Sometimes it's just like, there they, okay. Yeah. Just going to make an exercise game and make it like the best fucking exercise game ever. Okay, guys, we get it. Yeah. Like, just there isn't that much competition, it. but it is good. <laughs> no. Yeah. There is not much competition, but it's like classic <laughs> Nintendo to nail it. Right. With something so simple with just a, a basically a Pilates ring, I think is what it is. And yeah. then a leg strap and that's it. I wish you could and, get, um, higher resistance bands, like as an extra yeah. peripheral to buy. You know, you've been playing it yeah. for six months and you're like, oh, I'm kind of like, pushing through uh, certain muscles you know certain muscles are stronger than others uh, it'd be nice to just be able to switch back and forth between different bands or maybe some advanced technology where you can increase the resistance on one band that'd be cool ring fit yeah, two yeah. something like that that'd be cool yeah i wonder what the future of it is um I i'll be interested would, to see i think if you could increase the resistance on a band don't know the tech behind that but like a slider it makes it harder and harder to I'm sure squeeze could. in. I'm that, sure it could be done. That would be really cool. I'd, I'd be a big fan of that. Yeah. Yeah, and, you know, they're good about messaging that. That it's like, you know, one of the pop-ups that comes up regular. It's like, am I going to get ripped playing this? And it's like, <laughs> no, buddy, you're not. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> but it's like, it's very honest. It's like, you can't, you're not going to, like, like it says, get ripped when you're using your own weight for everything. Mm -hmm. Like, you have to introduce other stuff if you want to do that but as just something to keep your heart and lungs and blood healthy oh, yeah. and your brain healthy um it's it's pretty hard to beat especially when you can't fucking leave your house for nine months of the yeah, year <laughs> it is perfect for the uh the pandemic yeah and it's perfect for someone like me who you will never catch me in a gym in my entire oh yeah life. don't worry i'm there with you and you know walking is good for you, but it is not really like exercise. Mm -hmm. And I will never run, nor will <laughs> I bike in a city yeah. because I will die 30 seconds after leaving. And so, if you want to never leave your house and not become a giant like blob, like a, if you don't want to become a fall guy, basically, in your, <laughs> you, you play some Ring Fit Adventure. Wow. Talking of fall guys. <laughs> ba -da -ba -ba -da. My number five is Fall Guys. <laughs> <laughs> I would have loved if it was not. <laughs> I was going to say something else, but I was, I was like, I better not accidentally say something else on my list and spoil it for people because I almost did. <laughs> my number five of 2020 is, as I just said, Fall Guys. I was excited for Fall Guys uh, for quite a while um, because I'm a dork and I look into weird indie things for my bad streams. And that's all I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be a game that only I played for my bad streams and then no one else was going to play it. And it was really fun watching that be incredibly incorrect. Uh, I almost feel like I like the moment of Fall Guys more than I like Fall Guys. 
the two week honeymoon period of this game where it took over the internet and especially Twitch is my favorite video game memory of 2020. Uh, if I could shake Tim the Tapman's hand just for making me smile during those weeks, during some really low times, I would. I would shake that bastard's hand because him trying to get that one crown was just amazing. That was quite the spectator sport. Oh, that was, God, it was such was a moment. Um, but yeah. outside of watching other people play it, uh, I think I've mentioned quite a few times in the podcast and even in this video that I don't really connect with many multiplayer games anymore because they're so sweaty uh, and I'm not the most competitive of dudes. Uh, Fall Guys was like the right uh, like gameplay loop for me. I really enjoyed in Fall Guys how before you got into like the final couple of rounds, like no one gives a shit. Like it doesn't matter if you fall off or get kicked out. You have a watch your friends or you're back in. And the first like two thirds of a round don't feel like a battle royale at all. Like everyone's just messing around, grabbing each other, trying to push people off, waving at strangers. And I really like how you get kind of both tones of multiplayer in Fall Guys. Because it can really change when you get to a finale in something like Hexagon. Suddenly, it, it kind of gets pretty stressful and everyone's really trying their hardest. Uh, and I really loved being able to get both of those kind of energies from multiplayer gaming in one like 15 round of Fall Guys. Um, apart from that, you know, everyone's seen Fall Guys, you know what it is. It's super approachable, super accessible. Uh, the amount of people that were playing it and connecting with it was really fun. It was fun to stream it. Uh, I loved the aesthetic of the game, super readable, uh, and it was just nice to play a multiplayer game which had a focus on fun, and to have these emergent moments with strangers where you just grab someone and you weren't pushing them, you just have a hug at the end of the finish line. Uh, I haven't had those moments in multiplayer gaming in quite a few years, and I've been a real Scrooge and Grinch when it comes to online multiplayer, kind of avoided it mostly since uh, 2016. And, you know, I I didn't exactly play 10,000 hours of multiplayer games this year, but I have two multiplayer games on my list. That's, a, that's yeah, unheard wow. of. You know, one is a ghost hunting game and another is, <laughs> you know, a bean pushing game and it kind of died after two weeks because their support model was way too slow for the heat they had. Yeah. And, you know, fucking whatever. At this point, if that's everything, okay. you know, goes the route of Sea of Thieves and just falls off a cliff and... Die. Well, I say die, At least you had but, two yeah. weeks of delight exactly. with it. Exactly. You know? I'll take what I get. If it's 15 hours in Phasmophobia or two weeks in Fall Guys, I will take it. Oh, yeah. Like, it Fall Guys something. is a delight. Mm -hmm. It is just a delight. And uh, it's not on my list. Um, I never got super into it, but I, I always enjoyed it. And yeah. I liked watching it probably more than I liked playing it. Oh, yeah. Uh, even spectrum. though I think it is, it is like genuinely fun to play and like controls better that was the thing that struck me when i finally when i played it was like this controls better than it should mm, yeah in a way like it's tighter than it needs to be um, it doesn't go and, for yeah, like just, a iron bread certain simulator like no it's not like co-op like yeah. it's pretty tight it's pretty tight and uh and I, but yeah the personality of it is so good all the music is amazing all the aesthetics are great the the sound effects from the beans and their triumphant victory woo, 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 woo. chance yeah i love all that stuff yeah, it's me just too. it's one of those games that just makes you happy mm -hmm. it's just got personality and and it really hit at a good time oh. in the year where i think i think everyone was really starting to feel it mm -hmm. by august and was really happy to embrace like something cute and funny and fun yes and yeah. uh it's a shame that it didn't last longer, but also, whatever, you know. You can still play it, it's okay. you know, if you want. Oh, God, yeah. It's like, a shame, I mean, you know. We can talk all day about how different developers support games and what is the right route to take when supporting games. And God, Phasmophobia is more popular on Steam. Than I think it's kind of Fall obvious guys. to everyone that Fall Guys was a little bit slow out the gate when it came to yeah. their update procedure. And then Among Us came along and it really just wasn't, you know, ideal. And, I, uh, you know, I'm a little bit disappointed about that. But uh, like you said, like, whatever. There'd be something else. Yeah. It's not like it was the... It really shouldn't have been the biggest game in the world, like, for what, for what it was. No, it's amazing that it was, yeah, that it was got so big. It was a great um, moment. And I disagree with people that the team games suck. I actually kind of really enjoyed having these mini 
frantic cooperative experiences with a bunch of strangers similar to Deep Rock. <gasps> Deep Rock's another multiplayer game. Three. Oh yeah, three. <gasps> yeah, out. Deep Rock's more a little more. I guess Phasmophobia and Deep Rock are a little more co-op. Yes, yeah. So it's, yeah. But, but that's know. still multiplayer. Yeah. God, still I multiplayer. couldn't even find cooperative games over these last couple of years. Yeah, wow. it's been it's been rough. It's been rough. Yeah. But you know what Fall Guys is. Super cute. Came at the right time. And I really connected with it. And I don't usually do that. You know, there's almost a joke that Joe doesn't ever play multiplayer games. Because he's a fucking lock-in loser. Doesn't want to talk to people. But I, I like some when they're fun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's fair. That's a good the philosophy to have with most games. <laughs> yeah, Fall Guys was fun. I like it if it's fun. <laughs> All right. We're making a not bad pace this time. Not bad. No, yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, number four. Now, there might be a little bit of controversy with the placement of this one from you. Hmm. Oh, okay. Number four is Half-Life Alex. Mm -hmm. was pretty good. Now, I think, yeah, uh, well, so I, there was a time where this was number one, oh, you know, okay. earlier in the year. But I think as time has gone on, you know, I, um... Uh, well, okay. I think Half-Life Alex is like it's almost perfect. Oh it's a, an incredible video game. Like it's better than most things that I've played in the last few years. Um th the only reason it's not higher is just because like prior to this I I haven't cared about Half-Life. Yeah. Um and also I think the I wish the combat had been more interesting, though I do think the combat... Um, oh, I really like the combat. I think the combat comes to life a lot more on the harder difficulty when you're more limited by ammo and you, you have to get... And your health is, you know, you, everything's more deadly. You have to get more creative. A few of the which upgrades was good. really help as well. Yeah, yeah. But, like, the... Just the... I wanted something to get... Like, force me to use the creativity that is in there a bit more, and hard does improve that. But, um... Uh, yeah, I hadn't enjoyed or cared about Half-Life prior to this game. I, I had tried to play through those Half-Life games so many times. Um, Boo. I've never got through one. And then I, I would start to... I have I played through the first like five hours of Half-Life 2 probably six times. And... Um, but this year I did the... I, I sat down and I didn't get through one, but I... I played through two and the two episodes, and I just didn't really care about them. I thought they were, you know, there's, I liked, uh, there were many parts of it that I would like and I appreciate, but as a whole, none of them did a whole lot for me. Um, but this was the first one that made, like, Half-Life works in VR in a way for me that it doesn't outside of VR, mm. which I thought is really interesting. Yeah, Like, all of the combat and puzzles and world all of that really comes to life in vr for me in a way that i was surprised by and it's a very physical game like even before vr well, yeah, there was a lot exactly. of physicality to like breaking locks and using the grav gun to interact with the world yeah, and physics just, yeah just the physics model in those games is so good yeah um just, just picking up anything and putting it down uh feels so good but yeah, it was interesting seeing it all in VR and having it all, like it all just made sense in VR, which it was really interesting to me. And um, even though I think the first three out three chapters are a bit of a slog, they yeah. they also do make sense, and I get why they are the way that they are because for a lot of people this was probably their first VR game. It does make sense. And yeah, you need acclimation, but you and I are pretty hardcore VR VRers. And um, <laughs> those first few hours are a bit of a, a bit slow, but the I it, it, it's like one of the best action linear action games ever. Um, start to finish, especially from chapter four onwards with the hotel onwards, is just like one level after another that is fantastic. Mm -hmm. Even though I think they they probably could have had one more. Yeah, I wanted more gimmicky level in near the end, but it doesn't overstay its welcome. And it's the best VR game by a country mile. Yeah, um, not hard, but it yeah. was. No, I mean, <laughs> what's the only other game that the only other game that I would say is close is is Lone Echo, and I think Lone Echo does actually have parts of it that I like more. It, it, it's like the gameplay of Half Life Alex. There's not a lot in it that 
is like i mean it's a first person shooter right yeah. it's, it's whereas lone echo is like the the locomotion in lone echo could not be done outside of vr mm-hmm. uh which i i was sort of hoping there would be something like that in half-life alex and i mean the wrist flicking is you know maybe the closest thing to that but you could also just turn that into an animation right and just do that anyways half-life alex is a wonderful wonderful video game and i think it's wild that they announced it at like the end of december and then they just put it out in march a half-life game and after nine years since portal 2 it's not to say they haven't made video games since portal 2 of course but Video games that are worth caring about, yes. Uh, <laughs> sorry, Dota. <laughs> um, and that card game, that was a disaster. Yeah, I don't know, yeah. I don't know either. Uh, Artifact. Oh, man. Mm-hmm. Anyways. It was just... It's it's just, like... It was crazy to go into it being like, do they still have it? Yeah. And then they were like, yes. We do. <laughs> very much still have it they still have the magic some th- that combination of just world building gameplay design level design puzzles humor like everything makes sense and is so good in this mm-hmm. uh it's it's a wonderful journey i think the last 30 minutes are incredible <laughs> It's like one of the best video game endings ever. Mm-hmm. And as I said with Final Fantasy, like I did not care about the Half-Life story or universe. And then this game made me fascinated by it. Mm, okay. uh, like I am fascinated to see what they do next, if they do anything at all. Obviously, you know, that's the problem with Valve. It's like they could make Half-Life whatever they could do another game and maybe it'll be in two years or maybe they'll never do anything again i don't know yeah but it made me care about half-life um which is a. I kind of wish i they hadn't done that to me <laughs> <laughs> you know like, uh, oh now i'm in for the long haul yeah exactly Fuck. exactly but yeah there's just so many good things like i think maybe you know i i, I played a lot of it over that month because of the Mythbuster stuff as well. So it sort of, that sort of gets in the way uh, when you start to pick apart a game for myths, it's, it can sort of hinder enjoyment a little bit. So I really look forward to replaying it in like, you know, eight months or something mm-hmm. in like three sittings and uh, just going through the whole experience because it is just, it's just so, it's just full of so many good, well-made things. Yeah, It looks like the art is so good. The little wrist flick, it never stops being awesome. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a lot of amazing sound design, like amazing sound design in the game, uh, like especially in the last 30 minutes with the weird, the violin that is like trying to play violin. This is like, just like fucking weird shit in the sound design <laughs> that I love. And uh, yeah, I'll stop talking because. You'll have something to say about it. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's really, really good, and I think it is better than some of the other games on this list that might be above it. <laughs> I, well, you one of them, yes, because I know your list. But it's, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's um, it's a phenomenal video game. Incredible, wonderful experience, and it makes me sad because. It's the only one like it in VR. <laughs> yeah, like VR is the worst thing in the world to crave. Oh, God. Yeah. insatiable. This game is like, this game is like, I think we might, I might have even said this. I don't know. What was, what's a compare? It's it's like how 2001 A Space Odyssey like created and ended all science fiction <laughs> films. This is like yeah. the best and worst VR game because it's like, now we have nothing. Yeah. <laughs> It, it like it was years of tech demos and then you moved into like these small shitty fucking rep- I mean they're not bad there there's a lot of good little experiences in VR and then you get one low neck go and you're like wow that was really good and then you get this and it's like done VR I put my I put my VR in a box and I have I like I don't know the next time I'll pull it out because it's like we're good they they made the VR game <laughs> the credits and- rolled on VR 
and it kind of it kind of feels like that honestly because yeah, VR uh, VR is a whole other ball game to talk about but it's 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 oh it's so good and it makes me sad that it's so good because I I want like six other games that are oh, as good yeah, as this yeah me too man me too oh but in a year this generation has not had enough great linear action adventure yeah, games yeah you know, I tried to play uh, Black Ops Cold War's campaign and I just couldn't do it because it was so fucking boring. And uh, But I, the reason that I wanted to play it is because it's it, it was like one of the only linear games that was out. Mm. It's like uh, so few linear games anymore and uh, so few still that don't overstay their welcome as well. Yeah. Like, this is a perfectly sized game. It's, it's like 8 to 10 hours and it's done. And... Oh yeah. Anyways, that's it. I'll stop talking. <laughs> yeah. So that you can say we, things. We will. Uh, we will get Maybe. back to it. We will Perhaps. Get back to mm. it. Uh, my number four. Number four is the Final Fantasy VII remake. Oh wow! I huh? I am. I will say. I am surprised. It is higher than my. Uh, I like because uh-huh. when we talked about it. I, it just didn't feel like you liked it anywhere near as much as I did, and so oh, this yeah, is I'm just I'm bad with words, mate. <laughs> that's okay. Yeah, I'm just surprised. That's I that's maybe it's it. like roast tinted glasses, but yeah, I really liked Final Fantasy VII. Like, I yeah. really like this game, and uh, I think the surprise element uh, is obviously a part of it. Um, when the trailers came out for Final Fantasy VII. Um, like you, I hadn't played the original, and I've barely played anything from Final Fantasy. I've played 14, yeah. and I think that's it. <laughs> 14 is the MMO, so... No, 15, 15. 15, 15. I think right, I tried right, right. 13 yeah, yeah. back in the day, but I'm just I'm not a fan of the franchise. But what I liked from the trailer was just what I will call Japanese eccentric weirdness. And I find myself uh, wanting that more and more, just because... Western stuff is getting safer. Up its own ass. Like, when it comes to video games and sometimes even big budget movies, you know, the Western market is reaching a lot of pies. No, fingers. <laughs> it's got huh? fingers in a lot of pies. <laughs> yes, Sorry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, it- when they are investing, you know, millions and millions and millions of dollars, sometimes you don't want your thing to be unapproachable to the average person. Um, so I find myself looking at Japanese content like, wow, they are unashamed to be weird and quirky and different because, you know, the Japanese audience likes that. You want Yakuza without Yakuza games. Yeah. You want that to leech over into everything. Yes. Yes, yeah. I do. And I don't want to watch mm-hmm. anime. So I want it in my no. video games. <laughs> uh, and that's why I was excited for Final Fantasy VII. And that was kind of the only reason why I wanted in. Just because I like playing weird Japanese video games. I just like their tone. Uh, you know, sometimes obviously lots of things are varied. But from the trailer, uh, I felt like it was giving off the energy I wanted. And I will say, uh, I did get what I wanted from that aspect of the game. I really think oh, yeah. this game is funny and weird without being uh, like really weeboo and Japanese and cringy and uncomfortable. There are moments mm-hmm. which go over the line a little bit. For us, you know, soft westerners who don't like things that... Uh, How about that massage sequence? That was too much, I would say. I didn't need to hear those noises from Cloud, I'll tell you that. I'm pulling my collar off like, oh <laughs> god, this is holy. <laughs> but like 90% of the game really tread, treaded, trod, trod the line that I wanted from the tone of this game. Uh, it made me laugh multiple times and I, I liked the flavor of comedy it was going for. And I really liked the characters. I liked the story. I didn't really know what was going on most of the time, but again, that's Japan, and I'm okay with that. Yeah. Uh, but the biggest surprise for me um, was the combat and RPG systems in the game. Uh, I didn't care about the combat in the game. I don't think I even really understood how it worked, but I came away from Final Fantasy VII just adoring the combat in that game. It mm-hmm. gave my nerdy brain enough of the like min max building stuff i'm that guy who would like sit in the menu after my streams streams and just sit there like going through all the materia and the upgrades and thinking about you know min maxing the numbers 
And the nice thing about the game is you really didn't need to do that. It wasn't that demanding of a game until maybe the last boss. But I, I like that stuff and I enjoyed the systems. I will say the menus are probably the worst thing in the game. They're really clunky yeah. and they don't allow for... Um, what's the word I'm looking for when you like set up a build and you save it? Like loadouts. Loadouts, that's what I'm looking yes, for. Yes, yeah. It's like oh switching God, between I forgot things. about that. Not knowing when a character oh was going to drop out. Just that stuff I think needs work for the next one. Yeah. Especially like that portion near the end where your characters are yes. constantly switching and like for fuck's sake. Oh my sake. God, I forgot about that. Like fuck, you've made a system so where I'm leveling up materials on purpose. So I'm not going to just leave yeah. a level one anyway. Yeah, and that yeah. was the only weak point of the game for me. I love the combat, I like the stories and the characters and the tone, and that's kind of like 80% of the game. Um, outside of that, it's just the side quest areas, and they were okay. Um, they weren't the best part of the game, but for pacing, like maybe a little breather from all the weird Japanese stuff, just walking around a little town doing menial They were very fetch like stuffs. MMO fetch questy. Yeah, and it was yeah. good for combat, there's a lot of combat in those uh, sections. Yeah. But yeah. I think that's all I've really got to say about it. I went in just looking for quirky Japanese humor and came away liking a lot of it. And like you said, I wasn't in for the right. Um, you know, I just, I was on, I was in based on superficial things. And now I'm with you. I'm looking forward to the second, third, fourth one, whatever. I'm I there am, for the whole ride. I am fascinated to see what they do with this stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Because I don't know what the roadmap's going to be like. Is it every two years or is it just one more after five years? Yeah, I, I can't wait to see, though. I'm, I'm in. I've already forgotten what the fuck happened. I remember there being a yeah. dog at the end. Um. Yeah, what's his name? I can't remember. I can't but, yeah. remember. I don't really remember. can't remember any of their names. Oh, but I, oh also, yeah. it was the horniest game ever made. We forgot to mention that. Yeah, I was into it. That's all I'll say about that. I was into it. Uh, and like you said, I almost forgot to mention it. The weird pivot... At the end, which, like you, I had to like see the credits roll, exit the game, and go on the internet to figure out what the hell had happened. And when yeah. I figured out the direction that they're like, going oh. in, I was like, wow, that's that's really interesting. That's a creative angle to take this at. And, you know, going back to The Last of Us Part 2, I like it when games do something weird with their format. Sometimes it doesn't work out. But, you know, this is one of those occasions, like Metal Gear Solid 2, where... The people behind a big franchise do something a bit uh, brave and experimental, especially when you have these crazy fans. Like, woof, uh, br a brave move, but one I appreciate. I think both Half Life and Final Fantasy solve their very like they have very famous story moments and problems that, right. that exist. Final Fantasy VII, you know, there's a few of them uh, that are like famous moments and, yeah. and people were wondering like how can you make that something interesting again and both games saw like they both games write themselves out of the trap that they wrote themselves into 30 years ago yeah. and they do it in really clever and fun ways that make it exciting to see where it'll go in the future like i heard um, that some people who were playing were not leveling up Aerith. Because, you know... Oh, right. Yeah, of course. Because they're, they're yeah. long-time fans of the game. And yeah. I don't think anyone realized how short of a segment of the original game it was. But anyway, yeah, it's people, like the first were, four hours people of the game. were not <laughs> expecting her to make it. But huh? yeah. I'm not going to say anything in case people missed out on Final Fantasy Well, VII, and but. that's the thing. Like, maybe that will still happen, right? Yeah. You don't know. Because it's it's like True. the Wild West. Yeah, I mean, this is the Kingdom Hearts guy now. Like, coming back and... There were some really interesting articles where they were interviewing the developers. I think we talked about it back then where it's like they're these are these guys that are coming back to like their most famous creation mm -hmm. that they cre and they created it when they were young and now they're coming back to it as older men and and women and f like re-examining it and and they're confident enough to just do new things with it. And because it is their own thing that they are doing it to, right? And it's just yeah, it's a fascinating release, and I, I am quite. I am honestly did not think it was going to be on your list after you hadn't said it in your bottom five, and so I'm, I'm very yeah. glad it was because I, I think yeah, it, I really liked Final Fantasy VII Remake mm -hmm. Part One of Question Mark. Yeah, I would say the year helped. Um, yeah, you know, it's not the strongest list I've ever made. You know, maybe no. other years it wouldn't have been so high, but hey, uh, I really liked it. 
and it kind of felt like one of the only like long AAA story adventure games of the year. I know it's an RPG, but there's a lot of like linear cinematic stuff in that game that doesn't really feel that RPG like at uh, times. So I really like the format yeah. of the game as well. Yeah, yeah, it was sort of God of War ish a little bit, where you can go on like these long like linear missions, yeah. basically. That yeah, I like that stuff a lot. Like, no wonder yeah. it took them so long. It's like so expensive looking, and it's quite a oh, long. Yeah. Like was it twenty five to thirty hours? It was, it was probably like thirty hours. Yeah. yeah, twenty to thirty hours. Yeah. Also, oh man, I just remembered the staircase suite sequence. Oh my god, that was funny. Staircase sequence. I think you took the elevator at Shinra oh, HQ. Oh no, I went up the stairs slowly. Oh good, okay, good. Oh, this that was so <laughs> funny. Oh my god, I was killing myself. That was oh, that was incredible. Oh, there's so many great moments in this game. I love the silly mini yeah. games you do in Wall Market. They were great. Yeah, I I liked I liked being surprised that Cloud actually is a good character. Mm. Like Cloud, Cloud is like the first half. Cl Cloud in the first half is like V in Cyberpunk, right? Yeah. And then Cloud in the second half, you're like, oh, oh, Cloud. Cloud, you've got like, there's a lot going on with you. And I'm like, I get it. I understand. And he's like letting the barriers down and like relaxing a little bit. And he, Cloud was really good. I, the the I'm characters very were all surprisingly pretty good, actually. They're all great. Yeah. Yeah. Um, some of them are really stupid. Like, uh, Badger from Breaking Bad getting his ass eaten, like chomped <laughs> by the by the dogs. And sorry about your ass. <laughs> sorry about your ass. <laughs> what? Yeah, I, I I hope it comes out on PC because I would definitely replay that game mm -hmm. and have a good time with it. Yeah. Um. All right, the top three. I think we both know each other's games, um, more or less. I uh, yes. I, I I know your list. I'm. I know what's on your. I I know what your last three are as mm -hmm. well. I would say. Um. All right, my number three is Cyberpunk 2077. Please don't be mad at me, comments, but um, <laughs> I am someone, I think as I am getting older, I am getting better at two things. One is just going, like just taking something for what it is, mm -hmm. I think. I have gotten, I've been disappointed enough prior that I, I have now started to make an effort to just go into things with an open mind, and I think actually even something like Final Fantasy VII help, helps with that, like experiences like that where it's like, I go in not expecting to like it and end up loving it, and I think I just, I'm trying to get better and better at just going into things, just being like, I don't know what this thing is, I'm here, I'm ready, and if I'm gonna like it, I'm gonna like it, yeah. and if I don't, that's fine. And the other thing is I think I'm getting more or I'm realizing this more about myself which is like I am able to appreciate things as like a whole if I like a lot of small parts of it mm. and the opposite is true as well whereas something like The Last of Us like you I think are good at, at like you can take things from the, the Last of Us and be like you know you were, liked it enough still to put it on your list because of these things that you like in it Whereas I am like the the overall thought for me of that game is so negative that I I can't I'm like unable to appreciate anything in it right <laughs> yeah. and so the the opposite is true for me now as well it, where it's and it's very true I think at most true for Cyberpunk where it's like there are so many little things in here that I really really like that it makes me. It makes it easier for me to sort of gloss over the multitude of problems and unfinished parts of the game mm -hmm. that are present. And you know, we talked about it for a, an enormous amount of time. But I think the two the two big takeaways now with even an extra few days is like I I have been wanting a game for quite a few years now that I can just like I've been wanting a big open world game that I can just play a lot of and enjoy yeah. and. I've tried like the Ubisoft games and the Ubisoft games from Sony and the Ubisoft games from these other develop, you know, and it's like I've bounced off of so many of them, all of them really. And I've just been, I've had this itch that has been needing to be scratched for a long time mm -hmm. um, and Fallout as well. Uh, and, and this really scratches that itch of just being able to wander around a world and sort of mindlessly play it and enjoy it. And that's a big part of it. 
Um, and then I forgot what the other one was, so fuck it, I don't know. <laughs> Moving on, I guess, number two. No. Um, there, there's just... I, I think, you know, as I said, I went in with a pretty tempered expectations and that paid off a lot. Uh, and there's just... There are an enormous number of little things in here that I like a lot. Oh yeah, the other big part for me was just the gameplay stuff of it, and I, I had to capture four hours of footage for our four hour long review chat of this video game. And I started a new character and it went all melee, having not touched the melee, and I was like, oh, immediately I'm like, I'm the melee is super fun. And the gunplay was super fun for like a hundred hours. And Yeah. I did a really I good take job away from it. Yeah, my takeaway from it after over a hundred hours now is that I I keep trying to play other games and I keep coming back to playing Cyberpunk. It is nice having it there. It really is. Yeah, and it, I just can't quit it yet. And part of that is because, you know, it has so many problems and, and is disappointing and frustrating. But it is, there's just so many little good things in it that I like so much that uh, I, I would be lying to myself if I had put it lower. Yeah, that's fair. Um, I think without the bugs, it would have been, it might have been able to have moved higher. It was never going to be able to be number one in the state that it is in, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, because of the, if the bugs weren't there, it still wouldn't be number one because of mainly the like organization and structuring of side stuff uh, I think is really the biggest nuisance I have with that game is just all that as we discussed but um, yeah you know I, I it would have been nice to have had a game this year that was like an easy pick for number one and yeah. I would have thought for a long while that it would have been cyberpunk um but it's not, and that's okay, and I'm fine with that. Uh, I, 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 there were like many dark hours with this game, especially early on, and but I have, I don't play this much of a game in such a short period of time if I don't really like a lot of things in it, and I like a lot of things in Cyberpunk, and uh, have been able to appreciate it for what it is, and also get a pretty good experience with it. Also, because I'm on a PC. I can mod it as well. Like I've installed some mods that it, like fix a few quality of life things, you know. And it's like I am lucky to have been able to have had such a good experience, or a, a largely a very good experience with yeah. it. Um, yeah. And so I think that is why it would be above something like Half Life, even though Half Life is just like better in every way, more or less. <laughs> Yeah. Um, well, not in every way, like art and sound design and things like that. They're very similar, actually, I would say. Um, but it's just it's just one of those things that there are just like enough things in it, like enough pieces of lore, enough you pieces of visual design. You don't go to apologize, design. man, or justify. Yeah, yeah. You like what you like. Exactly. And I like cyberpunk. Uh, Me too. I, though I wish it was I wish it was better, and I look forward to Me playing too. it in a better state in two years. Yeah, I think I said to you on Discord the other day that it's weird to still have Cyberpunk as one of my most anticipated things, and I played 75 hours of it. Yeah. And technically yeah. it's out, but I'm still excited about it. Right, yeah. And it's weird for me to have played like 120 hours of it Whew. and still want to keep playing it. Yeah. So, yeah. You can reference our four-hour-long chat if you want further <laughs> details on how we feel about Cyberpunk 2077. Christ, yeah. You're number three. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. So I think this is the last reveal I have for you in terms of order. Mm -hmm. Since, you know, I kind of spoiled my number one in the, the best of the gen chat. It's always going to happen unless Cyberpunk comes. I come think and, you know. I know which one you're going with over the other. I think, but I'll let you go. I'll let you say it. Okay. My number three is Risk of Rain 2. Hmm. Okay. Wow. Did you get it right? No, actually. Ah. I was thinking it was going to be the other way around. <laughs> All right. Uh, Risk of Rain 2 is a game that we, we talked about a lot on the podcast, so I've kind of gone over things. Um, I would 
describe it as a giant chemistry set which I couldn't stop experimenting with. Mm. Um, I think 90% of the time I spent with Risk of Rain 2, I wasn't even trying to beat a run. I just loved this uh, playground. I loved messing around with each character. Uh, the plethora of items can really be pushed to the absolute limit. And I just absolutely loved every single run of this game because I never really knew what the hell was about to happen. And uh, I think one of my fondest memories of the entirety of 2020 is getting a really, really good run going in Risk of Rain 2. And fucking hell, man, when you get a, a real god run going in this game, it's almost incomprehensible, but just comprehensible enough that you can manage to kind of keep things under control. But, yeah. but getting one of those going while listening to Daft Punk. Ooh. And I feel mean or disrespectful because the actual soundtrack in Risk of Rain 2 is amazing, so I feel like it's almost blasphemy to mute that thing. But I promise I, I, I gave due course to the, uh, the official soundtrack. But there's just something about random access memories that goes so well with some of the climaxes in Risk of Rain 2. <laughs> this game plays like music. It really does feel like it has like crescendos and build-ups. And yeah, like I don't think I really want to talk too much more about Risk of Rain 2 because we've gone into the nuances. Uh, I think my favourite podcast the entire year was when we discussed Hades and Risk of Rain 2 together. Because they really have a lot of similar design philosophies, but in a completely different package. Like yeah. Hades and Risk of Rain 2 are two games which kind of just let you go. It's just gameplay. There's no limits. You just go at all, at all times. And uh, yeah, people want to hear maybe more detailed discussion. Maybe uh, check out the Defend the Podcast with me, Jameson and Ben. Uh, that was a really, really good chat. But Risk of Rain 2... It's just a great little sandbox. Um, it's the only game I've played in a long time which lets you basically break it uh, by design. It feels like this yeah. game is modded when it's not. Um, uh, yeah, that's all I'm going to say about Risk of Rain 2. It's fucking amazing. That's something I sort of feel, again, about Cyberpunk, where it's like, I feel like I'm breaking that game mm -hmm. in a lot of ways. And in Cyberpunk, it's like... Maybe Accent not by design. <laughs> exactly, exactly. But yeah. hey, or, um, yes, uh, what's this game called? Risk of Rain 2. Yeah, it's like, when I when I, I have not played much of it, and I've sort of deliberately left it um, because I got into the other big roguelike at the time. Mm -hmm. And um, But I do want to like go and properly give it a try and put time into it. But when I, when I played the chunk of it that I played, and immediately it was like, and I realized that the mods just go. Yeah. Like, they just stack, and you can have any... Uh, like, there's no limit to them. I was like, oh, they get it. Yeah. They know what they're doing. Like, it's something we talked about a few times this year, and most recently with Cyberpunk. It's like, it's just nice when a game lets you break shit and have fun and just kind of go wild. And Risk Rain 2 is like they built the entire game around that concept. I do think a fault with Risk of Rain 2 is... I think Hades does a better job of pushing the player forward until they get to the point where they break the game in fun ways. Uh, yeah. Like, I haven't had a Hades run yet where I've, like, completely gone crazy and my build is broken. But I was listening to um, Ko, Ko Carnage, who gave it his game of the year. He's played, like, I think 200 hours of it, and he was explaining, like, how he broke the game with, like, uh, attack speed mixed with healing so that you can uh, you can heal quicker than you can take damage, and you can just stand there. Ooh. And he was explaining these things to me, and I was like, oh, I didn't even know you could do that in Hades. Um, I think Hades and Risk of Rain both have this wall that you need to break through as a player. You need to yes. learn the systems, because Risk of Rain 2 is... I don't think it does a very good job of letting the player know what the game can be. And you also have to want it. You have to invest enough time to know the items. And there's a lot of them. Because you can't break the game without knowledge of what everything does and what not to pick up and what to pick up. And I do think Hades does a better job of getting you to that place uh, with actual in-game incentives. And in Risk of Rain right, 2... Right, and you, tutorializing it. Yeah, and, sort of, yeah, and story and lore. And in Risk of Rain yeah. 2, you just got to push through and learn. you just got to, like, brute force past this wall. And a lot of people aren't even going to know there is a wall. They're just going to beat the game and be like, oh, that was fun. 
But like, if you get to high end risk terrain too, it's it's just magic. Okay, yeah, that that's sort of what I like. You've talked about having not broken the wall in Hades, and I haven't yeah. broken the wall in Risk of Rain. I I played like three hours and then did a run and beat the game, and haven't really gone back to it since. Mm -hmm. And um, but that was you know, partially deliberate. Um, but yeah, knowing hearing that it has. Yeah, being able to learn the things and really build a character run out. Yeah. Uh, and chase down, like, I'm just going to go for this specific thing and see how absolutely crazy it can get. Uh, that all sounds excellent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I look forward to all that. Yeah. And I will play it. And the soundtrack is amazing. Oof. Amazing. It's a great... I like, the I like the visual design of that game as well. Me too. It actually took me a while to get used to it. I, I wouldn't say I was attracted to the visuals as much as I, you know, am to something like Hades or even Gungeon. But um, when you, you know, it's a bit plainer, but it's because things get so overwhelming, maybe the palette needs to be a bit more subdued. <laughs> it sort of reminds uh, me of, like, I don't know, there's, like, um, I'm just looking up his name here and seeing if that's the right person to compare it to. Yeah, sort of. There's that French comic artist, uh, Mobius. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, it sort of has a little bit of that. Like, it's sort of, like, plain and pastel, and but it, it really works for that. It really, yeah, it makes it... Things are legible. You can read in the chaos, but it, it just... It is also just sort of clean and pleasant like the, uh, in a way that I, I was... Yeah, I, I, I like the combination of visual and music in that game. I like how Risk of Rain 2 feels like it was maybe made by aliens or by a different reality. <laughs> yeah. Everything in that game is just not quite. Uh, it doesn't abide by a lot of the like un onboarding gameplay design rules that seem to be in the genre. Yeah, which is part of its fault, I think. Yeah, I'd agree. Yeah, because you want to get people hooked, mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, it doesn't. It just sort of is just like, here's the game. Go. Yeah, no it just tutorial. Puts it all on you. Doesn't even tell yeah. you how to get it's an very, item. It's like Jesus Christ. Very from like. Yeah, it know, is a bit. And, yeah. And that it's just like, it's a different approach. So, uh, excellent. Number three. Number three. Number three. Well, I guess that means I'm on number two here. So I think I know the order, but I actually, I actually really don't know. I really don't. I know. will say that I still. Mm, okay. Am not a hundred percent sure which one was which, but I think you. When I asked you the other day what you think my game of the year is, and you said what it was, and I think that helped me examine things <laughs> a bit. Okay. Anyways, my number two is your number two. Okay. My uh, number two is Doom Eternal. Doom Eternal, baby. There was, uh, so, okay, uh, and, uh, I don't know if I need to save this tangent for the next game or not, but, like, okay, there is, every year that we've done this, it has been very easy for me to pick a number one. Mm. Um, and I think the reason that it's easy for me to pick a number one is when it's a game that is, like, it's got a bunch of great game parts, right? Obviously. Uh, and But then there's also, like, that extra sort of emotional like attachment to it that sort of emotional through line or something even when it's some like the witness is not something you would associate as being like an emotional game the way red dead is mm. or outer wilds is but the witness is still like part of the magic of the witness is this emotional attachment and experience with like revelation and surprise and those things and for me 2020 didn't have a game like that. Yeah, yeah. There wasn't a game for me this year that I looked at and I was like, that's the number one. Mm -hmm. That is the game that is like the easy pick. It has all these great game elements and it has this um, like this certain, you know, that magic that makes you love it. That makes it an easy pick for number one. And so it came down to like, here are two really good video game ass video games. And which game has the more good parts? <laughs> <laughs> and it's really hard to decide because I think Doom Eternal is fucking incredible. Mm. And I think 
depending on like the day of the week i might say it's my i would say it's my number one and then like you know maybe the next day it would be my number two and then be back to number one and it was number one for quite a while oh, interesting inc up until like a few days ago and sometimes it was lower earlier in the year and i it, it, it it's been a tough battle to figure out which <laughs> one is one or two yeah and I think Doom Eternal is an extraordinary first-person shooter. Yeah. Uh, I think it's the best first-person shooter combat I've ever played, which is yeah. pretty impressive. I think I can agree. And I think that it it induces a state oh, in yeah. me that I have never experienced playing a video a, a first-person shooter before. I think you can probably get into a similar state in some other stylish action games. And I, I heard someone call Doom Eternal a stylish action game, and I realized that that is completely accurate. In that it's like playing, you know, the Devil May Cry games on like a high difficulty or something, where you just get into this like zen flow state of style yeah. and combat, and you're just flowing. And I've never liked those types of games. But Doom Eternal is one of those in first-person shooter form. You have to, like, give yourself away to Doom Eternal to succeed at it. And that is amazing to me. I went in expecting it to just be more Doom 2016. Yeah. And in a lot of ways, I mean, it is. It's just that they took it all and cranked it beyond anything you would have expected and... Also, they did really, in a lot of ways, sort of a shift away from what Doom 2016 was. Doom 2016 yeah. is this tremendous linear action first-person shooter game, and it's got a lot of, like, traditional... I don't know. It, it, Doom 2016 is, 2016 is weird because it breaks a lot of, like, classic game design first-person shooter elements, like no reloading and no fall damage and things like that but it is still like it's pretty straightforward at the end of the day it's pretty straightforward yeah and doom eternal is a video game ass video game that is all about f finding this perfect balance to get you into this flow state that they want you to get yeah. into and they achieve that in a way that i've never seen before and that flow state is like Except, you know, with hellish angels screaming at <laughs> Yeah. It's like a death metal scream, which I'm not going to do because I'll kill my voice. Uh, that's like the flow state. And it's just... I, I... I, you know, I like first-person shooters a lot. They're sort of like the bread and butter for me that I... I, I like first-person games, let's say. And first-person shooters can... I, I like being able to play a game that I can get cool stylish action out of in first person but the problem with first person shooters over the last 10 years is that they're fucking so easy yeah and not just in terms of health and damage and things like that but also just in terms of play style like every call of duty game is just left trigger right trigger left trigger right trigger left trigger right trigger even you know something more complicated or potentially broken and weird like cyberpunk is like that game is comically easy. Titanfall is easy. Doom one, Doom 2016 is a very easy game. Because you get so powerful and it, and all these games let you fall into using the things that you like to use because they're powerful. Like Doom 2016's problem that the creative director always disliked was you can use the starter shotgun and the rocket launcher to beat that entire game and that's how I play Doom 2016 and it's great and it's fun. Yeah. And Doom Eternal they were like, no, we don't like that. We want you to use every tool in the toolbox. I think, and we um, need to... In, in yeah. June 2016, they, they use a term a lot called combat chess. And right. I do think that's an apt description... Uh, for the combat flow in Doom, but I also don't think 2016 really lived up to that phrase. But I would say Doom Eternal triples down on that phrase. Doom Eternal is like... Um in the Queen's Gambit when they're, they're doing like uh, <laughs> speed chess yeah. with five other players. Yeah. That's that's the type of that's chess Doom analogy, Eternal yeah. is. Yeah. Um, 
Doom 2016 is like a classy, you know, oh, I'll move this here and you'll move that there. And then Doom Eternal is like, I beat six people in 10 seconds. Yeah. Uh, because I'm a god and I'm seeing the Matrix code. Um, and yeah, so I, d d it is the most amazing playing first person shooter ever made, I think. And, and when I, and I also think you need to get, to get the best experience out of it, you need to A, play it on the one up high from medium difficulty. So like, not the hardest, wait, though the hardest, ha I think you know, I might do that. Is hard? I don't. I think it's nightmare, nightmare, and actually, ultra violence is the good difficulty. Okay. That we so it's like easy, medium, hard, ultra hard. So you want to play it on a hard difficulty, mm -hmm. and you want to play it on a on a personal computer, uh, with a mouse and keyboard, yeah, Jesus. and as high a frame rate as you can get, because you need to be tuned the fuck in every single second of this game. <laughs> And it's amazing at getting you to do that. The just you know, we we talked for a long time about it and I reviewed it and I just think all of the like little problems, the areas that Doom Eternal falters are completely unimportant because of how good yeah. the combat it's, it's state is. Not why is. you're there, really, it's just an extra, you know, ingredient. Yeah, exactly. Like Doom twenty sixteen had that extra magic of oh the story and writing in this game is like really very clever and funny, mm -hmm. um, and this game doesn't have that. Uh, the writing actually gets in the way, I think. But you just they they get you to use everything in the toolkit, and you get into this state where you're like I am sitting up straight. I am head on in this monitor. My eyes are simultaneously glazed over and searing into the reticle. And <laughs> I am shooting this, you know, shoot this gun, switch to this, grapple, jump, double jump, dash, do this. Oh, this guy, gotta focus on him, hit the weak point, do the, you know, oh god, oh god, I need to breathe, chainsaw. <gasps> Go back in and, you know, just repeat over and over again. And they also escalate that super well. Mm -hmm. um, and I think actually the. DLC, the first part of the DLC was really interesting because I went, I just dove back into it and had a terrible fucking time with it <laughs> and stopped playing it because I had not played Doom Eternal in six months and so I was rusty as hell and that game picks up where the end game difficulty got to and it's, oh, yeah. it was interesting to jump into end game difficulty and realize how much they ramp up the difficulty of that game through over the course of it. Um, you know, I went back and played uh, the super gore nest the, the yesterday and it was like okay this is fairly manageable uh, because it's early on in the game and they just I, I, I am really looking forward to replaying the whole base game and both parts of the DLC when they're out because it is a very very special magical first person shooter that and, and that is why it was so tempting to put it at number one is because it's like this is my bread and butter that has now been perfected <laughs> yeah. in a way basically and it, it is it is quite unique I think in despite being a first person shooter there is really nothing that has done this before I think yeah and I think it's going to be one of those games that people uh, as they get good learn to really appreciate <laughs> not to say that people don't appreciate it yeah. but there was there was a not significant, not small number of people that were not into Doom Eternal, um, and the yeah. reason is because they're bad. Yeah, it, unfortunately, you suck at the video game. Get good, play it the way it's designed to be played, aka with like a four liter pot of coffee beside you mm -hmm. and a three hundred hertz monitor, <laughs> and you're gonna have a good time because it, it it's it's a very demanding game yeah. and I love it for that. I love it for that. And the only reason it's number two is just because I think there are just a couple of little tiny things in it that are not perfect, but none of those things are related to combat. They're just little peripheral things like the stupid purple goo that shows up twice yeah. and the platforming I don't mind it but it doesn't really add anything to it I quite liked it uh, yeah I don't I I I enjoy the platforming it's just it's like it's fine it's just sort of just there pacing I, mechanism you know yeah I don't I don't dislike the platforming I, I like it as well but it just doesn't add a huge amount to it and <laughs> I think honestly the the biggest thing for me 
that is a fault. It's just that the story and writing is just, it's so self-serious. And there's a few times where the game gets that Doom 1 or Doom 2016 tone. And it's amazing when it does that, like the BFG level. Um, yeah, that God, that's thing so good. Is perfect. <laughs> you know, from you can't blow a hole into Mars. And he's like, yes, I fucking yeah. can. Thank you very much. Um, but it doesn't really matter to me because because of the combat. Mm-hmm. It, it is the king of combat uh, and, and uh, first person combat. And I I love it. It's so good. Oh my God, Doom Eternal is so fucking good. Holy shit. Well, one of the people who, uh, you know, wasn't liking Doom Eternal was me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I should have gone back and listened to our initial review uh, that we posted on the channel, our big roundup podcast, because I can't remember where I was when we did that review. I think I was still, like, not that in love with the game at the time. So maybe there's a couple of reviewers who heard me put this in number two and were a bit confused. I went on a really, really good journey with Doom Eternal. Um, and I'm not actually sure if it would be my number two if it wasn't for the journey. Um, I didn't like the game that much when I first played it. Um, I have muscle memory for 2016. And uh, like I said a second ago, I don't think 2016 really forced you to use the combat chess system. And uh, I didn't really. You know, you have to use a couple of guns on certain enemies, but apart from that, I used what I wanted to. And I just didn't acclimate to Doom Eternal very quickly. And I wasn't good at it. Um, I was dying a lot. And one of my biggest complaints, I think, was that I found the arenas cramped. I kept getting stuck and trapped. And that's because I wasn't killing enemies very quickly. (laughs) It's because I was bad at the game. Um... And when I beat the game for the first time, I definitely had come around to enjoying Doom Eternal. I actually came to really love the design choices that they made. I think Doom Eternal can maybe, uh, maybe not as dramatically as Final Fantasy VII, but it can go up into uh, this category of kind of risky design choices that were made this year. Yeah, it's not a safe sequel at all. It really isn't. They, like, double down on everything. Yeah, they could have really easily made another Doom game, like 2016, and put it out quickly. Yeah. But this was, like, four and a half years later this comes out, and it shows. And I was playing it, like, 2016, um, and I was frustrated that they had taken away my power fantasy. I was genuinely annoyed that I didn't feel like the Doom guy anymore. I was almost offended. <laughs> <laughs> but if they didn't do that, then I wouldn't have been able to reclaim that feeling for a second time. If they hadn't have upped the ante and put me through that journey, then I just would have been playing basically a DLC where I felt the same as always. And yeah. because they made the choices that they did, I got to have the the epiphany moment for a second time. And it was almost better than the first time I played 2016 and I got into the flow state and I was like, ooh, this game's really great and it feels great to be good at it. I enjoyed it more in Eternal because I felt like they'd taken it away from me for a little bit. And I was like, ah, I, I was like annoyed. I was like, you, I, just, I, don't, <laughs> I don't get it. And I kind of blamed it on the game and not on myself, you know, adjusting to the mechanics because I just didn't really know what was going on. But when I clicked with it in Eternal, oh, like the, it was like this massive relief washed over me. But I was like, oh, yes, Doom is... Oh, shit, I just unplugged my headphones. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> I was like, oh, Doom is still here. It's still here. I'm back. And yeah, I think relief is the, is the right word because I was just nervous that I wasn't going to like Doom Eternal. And, and, you know, looking at the rest of the year, it would have been a real bummer if I hadn't enjoyed Doom Eternal. It wouldn't have left many games, you know, on the, no. on the roster. So no, that moment yeah. for me was just like, I was slashed back in my chair like, oh, thank God I was just being a dumbass and I wasn't using my flamethrower and I wasn't using the, uh, what's the sawn off shot with the super shoddy to get armor. And I wasn't cycling my grenades properly and I was just using freeze when I didn't realize you can also use frag and freeze. They're not the same thing. You have to recharge uh-huh. frag when you use freeze. And the more I played of Eternal, I think because I was slower to uh, climatize to it than you, I just kept getting better at the game. Like the more I played, the more I was learning 
and the more that flow state was improving. And it was a really kind of strange experience where I had to play the game twice to really get to the point where I was back where I was with 2016. And it just felt like I got more out of the game than I would have if I'd come back, it had been 2016, I would have beaten it, seen the credits and be like, cool, Doom's good, and then left. But uh, I really enjoyed the, uh, you know, the change in demand in the game. It put me through this two playthrough journey. Uh, that was one of my favorite moments of 2020 in video games. And if they hadn't have made the kind of ballsy decision to make this a super demanding version of what they'd already put out and, you know, put people off with the Marauder and all these things, I wouldn't have had that. I would have played the game and not forgotten it, but it wouldn't have, um, you know, been as significant to me. I would have just yeah. been like, more Doom, yay, and then moved on. It would, Yeah, it would have been like, you know, number seven. Yeah, right? I'm like, Doom's like, good. Yeah, I liked it. Doom is still great. Yeah. I had a great time playing this safe sequel. Um, but the, yeah, they, they, I definitely like understood what they were going for really quickly mm -hmm. and got to that state really quickly. And then <clears throat> the pleasure of it was how they would like, they, they kept asking you to do more and more to stay on top and stay in that feeling of like this absolute doom slaying psychomaniac. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, this is this is this chat has made me going like, fuck. Oh, this is what I'm talking about. It's like oh, no. number one. I don't know. Oh, it's so hard. <laughs> it's so hard because I think my number like number one and two are just like so, like objectively good fucking video games. Mm -hmm. You know, for, in my eyes, and it's so difficult. Um, I will say. Oh, Doom Eternal is so good! I'm going to go back into the rabbit hole, and I am going to say that I don't think they nailed it with the Marauders. I just don't... like. You just have to get good at weapon cycling, scrub. Yeah, but I kind of want to fight them, because, you know, they're, they're a nice challenge. Yeah, you do fight them for two seconds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't want to erase them. I, you know, I like the idea I, of there being this, yeah. uh, you know, cog... When you do get into like that back and forth middle ground fight with a marauder, it does feel nice. I, I think. Yeah, I just think they're a little but bit repetitive to fight. It's kind of the same sure, yeah. thing over and over again. Um, yeah. But I'm not in the the camp who wants them removed from the game. Uh, I yeah. stand. Because you're good, Joe. <laughs> I stand by <laughs> all the design philosophies in Eternal, and I, agree, I yeah. really, really agree with the idea. Or putting something that stops Doomguy in his tracks. Like, that's a really cool mm -hmm. idea. Uh, you know, it's just their first effort at it, and I just don't think it was quite right. The the Marauder, to me, is like the rest of that game, where it's like, here is this thing that is in your way mm -hmm. for a while, and then you eventually get to the point, if you're good enough, where they're not a they're not you don't stop in your tracks for them. i might you learn just, weapon cycling maybe you, you know. just pull out the giant like austin powers road paver and just drive over the marauders <laughs> and be like haha -ha. but it's nice to have like one thing left on my list to learn in a yeah, yeah yeah and i actually when i when i played a level yesterday i did more key bind key rebinding mm -hmm. and put um moved the rocket launcher off the numpad or off the you know number keys and onto q so I can now, like, I have, like... You don't even e fight them. The, <laughs> no, you go, like, E is the meat hook, Q is the rocket launcher, v X is the, uh, the the ballista, and so you just go click, swap, click, swap, click, swap, click, swap, dead. Yeah. And, it's, and it happens in, like, four seconds, and it feels so good to nail that. Uh, I cannot wait to replay this whole game. Uh, I think I will DLCs. learn that for the DLC, because, you know, it's very marauder-heavy. And you've got to, yeah, yeah. And, and like some of the other games on this list, these next two, and Doom definitely has this, is it has a great sense of, like, the developers want to make a game that is fun and overpowered, <laughs> you know? And they have a great sense of just, like, yeah, that's, that's a good idea. Let's put that in there. And like I said, I think I put it in the chat the other day. Like, I saw the, I watched them, the, the devs watch the, uh, the speed run. And there's a glitch where you turn, you shoot precision bolts at micro missile speeds oh, on the okay. assault rifle, and they were using that in the speed run. And the creative director saw that and he's like, "Man, that's awesome! We've got to put that in the next game." And I'm like, "This guy understands how to make a fucking video game, <laughs> right?" It's just like, 
they want you to have fun and feel powerful and op and str- and and this game nails that mm-hmm. but it makes you work for it you and really got to cool earn it yeah you have to put in the work and you cannot play this game tired or uh in a small 10 minute session you have to get in the zone yeah and give yourself over to doom guy and then <laughs> And then everything dies. Uh, but, you know, there are just a lot of other little great... Like, it looks incredible. They did an amazing job of amping up the visuals yeah. from the last the set- game. The settings are really nice. The settings in, are... It's got way more color and variety in the settings. Like, just a ton of much more fantastical... Hmm. It's like, the first game is just corridors and hell. Um, it's steel and fire. And this game is just... It goes all over the place. Um... The uh, the the soundtrack is very good. I of think course. you know the first game, the first game like is sort of the more iconic soundtrack because the first game is more iconic. Mm-hmm. But I think the second the Eternal soundtrack is no lesser than the la- than the prior game. I think yeah. there are some incredible pieces of music in this game, mm-hmm. um, and it's just nice to play a like just an insanely polished. PC game as well, where like the game runs at absurd frame rates yeah, for the yeah. visual quality. You can customize every like it's just little things like this that add up on a PC experience to me, especially. And id Software is a PC dev, and it's been really cool to see them come back in such an incredible way. And I hope, I think I would. I don't know. It's weird. I don't know that they need to make another Doom game. Yeah, I have no idea where they would go. I don't know what they do next. I think, you know, I would love to see them make a third game because I would be fascinated to see what they do with it. But it also, this one-two punch of this, like, linear, comfy comeback game and then this crazy, stylish action game and then that's it. Go do something new. That might be... Maybe. Maybe that's what they do. Um, I like if they became, like, a From Software type company where they just pivoted right. in different yeah, directions. that would be interesting. But you can still sort of keep the like the DNA core philosophies and DNA. Yeah. yeah, that'd be really interesting. I, I really wonder what they do next. I feel like um, um, I know it's cliche to say this, but I feel like there is some like inspiration, some from software feelings in Eternal. Oh, I, I totally. It reminds yeah. me a little bit of Sekiro, where Sekiro was this like uncompromising vision of fuck off, I think a play, lot, play yeah. it this way, and this is what we want to do. And Sekiro was the game, his the creative director's favorite game of the year when it came out, oh, uh, which I think is did. very obvious. And also yeah. the most um, not controversial, um, most, uh, I always forget the word, the splitting. Um, divisive. It was pretty divisive, Sekiro. I think most yeah. people really liked it, but you know, if you didn't like the combat, that was it. Like that's all you can do. And Doom Eternal is pretty similar, yeah. I feel. And I think um, Doom Eternal embraces that attitude from from software of. And that attitude was at its most in Sekiro of, you need to get good at this game yeah. or you can fuck off. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're not going to like this game if you don't uh, embrace what it is and then also get very good at and it. And use everything uh, they've given you. Yeah, yeah. Um, I get it. I know I get people not yeah. not clicking with Doom Eternal, but it's I, because, I was one of them uh, for a little part. <laughs> it's, because, it's because you're bad. It was because ha. I was bad. It's true. <laughs> See? It was. I was right all along. <laughs> it actually was. Because I remember you oh. saying it when you went into the DLC and you were rusty. And you were like, wow, yeah. these a- a- areas seem really cramped. And They're I was tiny. Like, and I was like, no, it's not. It's because you're not killing enemies <laughs> fast enough. That's what I had right. when I started the game. That's what, yeah. exactly what I said in the review. I was like, wow, it's really cramped in here. It's like, no, I sucked. Yeah. Yeah. And then I didn't. Oh, it's so good. You know, it's... um. It's nice to hit a skill wall and overcome it. Sometimes, yeah. uh, you know, games are pretty easy nowadays. And if you're practiced in a genre, you know, especially with mouse and keyboard, you can kind of just jump into things and destroy. So it's nice. It's nice to hit a skill yeah. wall every now and then and have to earn it. I, I enjoy so that. Many games, so many games that we play on PC, you especially, because mm. I, I often do end up sort of switching to a controller mm. or something. So many times that we review a game and you're like, this is the easiest, most OP game I've ever played on a mouse and keyboard. Yeah. Like Gears and Cyberpunk and this and that. And you're like, just headshot, headshot, headshot. And every combat encounter lasts three seconds. <laughs> yeah. And it's that's fun. But it is nice to feel both overpowered and stressed and sweating. Yeah. Uh, it's damn good, man. It is damn good, and it, it, this is like the year where I am most like 
this is like it's like a tie for me in sort of like the red dead god of warrior a little bit but i think now it, at that time has passed it is you know red dead is the definitive mm -hmm. number one for me that year but I, I wonder in another year's time where i'll be at Interesting. and if i'll if it'll be easier to choose i'm not sure because like yeah it is it's tough it's and that's a good thing oh yeah that's a good thing so i guess it's time for my number one right I'd say do it this is the first year in since 2015 since the last cd project red game came out weird uh no that we haven't had the the same number one. Oh, really? This is, yeah, 2016 was The Witness. 2017 was Horizon. 2018 was Red Dead. 2019 was Outer Wilds. Wow. So, yeah. Well, thanks God is, I didn't play it then, eh? <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> Maybe I would have loved number it. Number one for me is Hades. Mm. A very popular and choice at the moment. I see a lot of Hades going around. It is. It's interesting. Yeah, and I... When... when we talked at, about cyberpunk and at the end of it i was saying i don't know what my number one is and you said i think you know i think i know what your number one is and i said what is it and you said i think it's hades and i was like hmm yeah maybe he's right <laughs> i influenced it yeah well you did honestly a little bit because it made me like lean back and look at them and, and then what i had to do is look at them from like a sort of like disconnected like game reviewy like not very emotional perspective mm -hmm. like i talked about because there's not like a really strong emotional connection but it's like what game has more parts of it that are without issue and that's hades i think hades hades is one of those games that i would call perfect in that i can't think there's nothing there that i would personally fault Mm, environmental There's, variation maybe maybe but the uh, the art is so good that i never care that's fair. yeah and you get to a point where you're not spending a lot of times in those environments <laughs> yeah, okay. um no actually there are probably like a couple of you know small notes uh like boss variety but like like you said with risk of rain it, it, at a certain point it, it it's not about the environments or the run it's about mm -hmm playing with the, the tools and finding crazy shit and like I want to get like a fast as hell time here how can I build this to make that work mm -hmm. uh, how can I make this gun the most insanely powerful thing ever uh, how can I you know that's what it really becomes about it and like you said with Risk of Rain it, it becomes a toolbox to play a sandbox to play in and but yeah, I think Hades, there is, every part of it is just tremendously well made. And I have really liked Supergiant's games. Uh, I like all of them. I think they've been getting better. And I think oh, yeah. Pyre is a, an amazing, fascinating, incredibly ambitious game from a storytelling perspective. Um, and a, as a piece of like character work and storytelling and world building pyre is incredible and it's been really neat to like follow them throughout their journey mm -hmm. uh like as i've said on the podcast like i remember watching on giant bomb the building the bastion series where they gave these guys cameras and they filmed most of the development of bastion and would like check in with giant bomb every six months and be like here is this horrifying looking in uh build of the game that has no art in it because we don't have an artist right now <laughs> um and it's been it's been a fun like 10 or 11 years of paying attention to them and watching them get better and better at making their games and hades was just like the i think the perfect storm for them yeah um it's it's everything that has been good about their games taken to the max i think all of their games for me has all have always had interesting gameplay systems that have felt really good. All of their games have had obviously incredible presentation, like art, music, menus, style, all that. Um, and all of their games have had really good writing. Uh, this as a story, I wouldn't say is super interesting. It's no pyre, but this is like a character driven game mm -hmm. with, with all the writing in it. And the entire cast is wonderful. Oh yeah. Uh, there's so much personality. All of the designs for everyone are amazing. All the voice acting is incredible, especially when you realize that like several of the voice actors are just the developers. Oh wow! 
like uh, the guy that writes all the music is the voice of Zagreus. Oh, damn. And also the voice of Skelly. Oh, okay. Uh, and, you, and, and you would never know that. Yeah, that's pretty impressive. And that's fascinating. And like the their main voice actor that is there, that's been, you know, he was the narrator in Bastion. He does like Ooh. six of the characters. He's in an this amazing game. voice. He, yeah, Logan Cunningham, I think is his name. And um, yeah, we, we talked, we had a very long chat about Hades and Risk of Rain 2. Um, I'll, I'll link uh, in the comment, I'll figure out what episode it was. Mm-hmm. Um, because it is really like a review roundup chat of those two games and how they are very similar and different and, you know, why one works yeah. right now really for me chat. and the other one didn't. And um, Hades was just a very, it was very surprising because I remember when they announced it, I guess it would have been t- two years ago now, December two years ago, it was when they announced the Epic Game Store as well. Uh, and it was the first game on the Epic Game Store, I think, oh. as well. And they said... We're making a roguelite, or like, I don't remember which one. I don't, please don't correct me in the comments. <laughs> We're making a roguelite, um, and it's an early access game. And I was like, oh, uh, oh, no, I don't want that. Because I really liked their prior games, and their prior games were, they released as complete experiences. And I liked them for that. And I was disappointed when I heard that, and I deliberately avoided Hades. I was going to play it when it was out of early access. I came to an out of early access, you know, like everyone else did in September, after hearing people gush about it for a long time, but I still went into it not expecting to connect with it in the long run because I don't like these types of games. Uh, and whoops, <laughs> wrong. 100 hours later, wrong. Um, you know, it helped that also again this year there were a lot of there was a lot of desire this year to have a game that you could play for a long period of time mm-hmm. and enjoy. <laughs> and uh, Hades was that it, it it really got its hooks in deep, and it was like a month of Hades probably. <laughs> yeah. And I have some like a few like kind of dark but fun memories of Hades, uh, playing Hades and missing out on uh, sitting at my computer with the other monitor with the. RTX stockbot tracker live and for the 3080 chasing because that was all at the same time as well <laughs> and I'm missing out missing out on a 3080 because I was playing uh, Hades at 12 o'clock at night and could have saved my life savings on if I hadn't been playing Hades <laughs> I might have gotten a 3080 instead damn and it's number one Oof. and it's number it's one be pretty yeah. good. so I just think for me, it's just one of those games that every single part of it is just remarkably well made. It, it, it balances fun gameplay with extremely good visuals. The music is tremendous. The voice acting is amazing. The character design is amazing. The the gameplay variety is amazing. The amount of writing oh, yeah. <laughs> is staggering. Like, I still am... I haven't really played much, uh, but, you know, at the end of my 100 hours, I was still progressing through unique dialogue. And it was, like, never really repeating outside of the usual uh, sort of boon intros. And, um, but yeah, like you with Risk of Rain, I think what the heart of it for me was just, it's just fun to play, and it's fun to play with all the pieces. And there really is a lot of variety that you can get into once you understand all the pieces that are there and and it's always digestible uh you know a run once you get good at the game a run is like 15 to 20 minutes and that's a really nice size and it also makes it really hard to put down um yeah i i i i was thinking the other day i'm like when this comes out on the playstation i'll probably do it all again. <laughs> Ooh, I wonder if that would... Oh, if that do send stuff, that'd be so good. That would be really Ooh. good. I hope they do that, because they're definitely working on, you know, PlayStation and Xbox mm. ports, for sure. Um, yeah, and, and this is not a major part of it, but it, it does help for me. It's nice to play a game and also have it be number one, where you know everyone working on the game, all the humans... We're happy and, comfor- <laughs> and comfortable. Yeah, that's so depressing. Because, and it is so depressing. But like, there there are good articles recently where they talked about like they have very strict 
like you are not allowed to send an email on the weekend mm -hmm. like the weekends are n you do not work on the weekend yeah and they are like super concerned about the, you know there's only 12 people or whatever and they want everyone to be happy and i think you can really feel that in their games what a concept that, eh? Uh, yeah and then you know obviously like you can feel happiness and creativity and passion. all that in most games you can feel a lot of passion in a lot of games but in this i feel like i've always felt that very strongly throughout their games they are all creative and unique and bursting with like everyone is firing at maximum creative capacity with their games as I think what I mean and I can really you really feel that and I and I feel it in Haze and it's awesome to see it be this huge success and I think it's it's deserved uh, yeah, all of the nice. people giving it game of the year including myself now I guess uh, I would never have expected that and I think it's a great surprise that that ended up being the case it's been a good and year for the smaller guys in the industry absolutely yeah and they really picked up the slack this year mm -hmm. oh yeah the triple a behemoths you know they're just so hard to navigate through new waters like this year had and the triple a or the indie guys were you know they're smaller lighter more agile and they can really do amazing work and i think risk of rain as well this and hades and a few other games on your list they proved the benefits of early access yeah. like early access took these games from being um, like really great to um, you know basically perfect video games right mm -hmm. like that's what early access in a good development environment can do and uh, yeah it's it's a wonderful 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 game and I, I had an amazing time playing it for like a month and will play it all again probably uh, when it comes out on a Playstation yeah that's cool uh, I never tired of looking at it I never tired of listening to it and I never tired of playing it so I think you know there is part of part, a not small part in my heart that wishes that wants Doom here but like I can go either way but I do yeah. think I think Hades is probably a little bit better but Ooh, it's, it's, right. i don't know but uh, i don't know you know that's just like that's being <laughs> okay. that's being like Ooh, this this has four good things and the, the doom has only three yeah. you know it's like stupid um but there you go i think people should play hades it's great yeah i look forward to uh, putting more time into it yeah and i'll be i'll be interested if you ever end up really clicking with it because you I know think... I think I can. It's my my initial yeah. problem with the game was just the lack of environmental variety and boss variety. But yeah. the more I hear people talk about it, the more I think I just need to get to the more sciency, you know, min maxing, mm -hmm. actually knowing what I'm doing when I'm building a run type stuff. I know yeah. my brain. I know I will attach to that. Um, at the moment, I'm I'm just at the point where all I'm focusing on is trying to win, and I think I need to stop. Right thinking about that so much yeah yeah. i'm just yeah. trying to beat hades because you know I, if i wasn't clicking with it i want to at least see the credits i know the game actually doesn't end up to well, one right? <laughs> i know it's like 10 or something no. but yeah i think it's 10 yeah i think i just need to get myself to where i got to with risk of rain 2 where i know what the gods are doing i know what boons could go together well and i'm like building something in my brain and getting excited when i see a certain god etc i need to get to that point yes yeah, and I got there, uh, yeah, when I got there, it, it lasted a very long time just being, uh, finding, finding those builds, and, but it is, it, it's, there's a lot of really intelligent design in it as well, like we talked about on the podcast, where it's like, this is a game that is, by and large, it's actually a pretty easy game, mm -hmm. and it gets easier and easier, and it's really smart about that. It makes it accessible to people like me, who would have bounced off of it sooner, I think, um, but it also makes it, you know, like, they know you're going to get... You want to just eventually start beating the game repeatedly over and over again and having, like, fun, crazy runs. And they, they're they very good about, like, easing that difficulty down yeah. over time. Uh, and I think it's also really smart to merge story stuff with roguelite. Stuff. Oh, yeah. And obviously very hard to do, but they, they do it super well here. And it's, it's not, like, the most in depth or amazing but it, it is all really well made just keeps you going story stuff and it keeps you going yeah and it and you keep getting new things over and over again <laughs> even after all the story the main story stuff is done you still like when you clear a run you still get like funny little unique 
uh, descriptions of how you would die, right? Like, a after a certain amount of clears, you have no more main story stuff when you beat the game, and so they just kill you, and it's like, Zagreus stepped out into the wilds, wilds of the mountains, and got stung by a bee and <laughs> died. And Zagreus is like, what, what, no! Uh, you know, and it's like, they just have fun with yeah. it all the way through. And, and and there's always, I still don't know when this game ends. Like, when when do I finally run out of dialogue? I have no idea, but it was like a hundred hours of it. And that's crazy. Yeah. They're madmen. Good job, Supergiant. I'm very happy for my, my sweet boys. I'm happy for them too. Good for you guys. All right. Okay. I should have gone first because I've got like the anticlimactic one of, you know. Maybe <laughs> some people didn't watch Top 10 of the Gen. But, you know, you probably, you know, they probably did watch Top 10 of the Gen. Probably did. My number one uh, of the year is Half Life Alex. Uh, talked about it not too long ago. It was number three on my yeah. top 10 of the entire generation. Uh, there is a magic factor to this game that I have not experienced in any game for a long time. Uh, there's a lot of good things about video games, uh, but like the magic childlike wonder, uh, not so easy to inspire in, you know, a 28 to 29 year old. You get a bit old, you get a bit grisly. <laughs> uh, yeah. And this was just like a theme park ride from beginning to end for me. I replayed the entire franchise before this and the transition from... Uh, spending like uh, 30 to 40 hours in the Half-Life universe in, you know, old Source Engine 2 dimensions and then jumping into mm -hmm. the new Source in VR was just like indescribable. Nothing in video games has ever been like that. Uh, and like you, you know, quite elegantly described earlier, it's just a great game. It does take a little while to get there, but some of the gameplay, gameplay sequences in uh, Half-Life Alex is something that virtual reality can only do and they evoked more fear in me than any game has in years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think we talked about it a few times on the podcast that uh, I like my horror and we don't get it very often. Um, and oh, the hotel scene in uh, Half-Life Alex, one of the scariest things I've experienced in video games. Crippling at times. Fucking horrible. But uh, I'll never forget it. I will absolutely never forget Spider Hotel, as I call it. I uh, really liked the combat. Uh, really enjoyed exploring the environment. I like the uh, the simple but kind of addicting loot system in the game of looking for the little gun upgrades. I like the development of the guns. Uh, and also, like you said, one of the boldest, ballsiest, and most exciting game ends in a long time. Uh, I managed to avoid spoilers, which was probably quite easy since, you know, it, it's a bit like Cyberpunk <laughs> where not many people really... You and me and Ben and, like, two other people yeah, on Earth were playing it. <laughs> it was, uh, you know, it's kind of sad when a game like this and Cyberpunk, yeah. Cyberpunk become a little bit of, like, an exclusive uh, elitist thing. Yeah. But, um, unfortunately, um, it wouldn't have worked outside of VR anyway. Um, so, yeah, going into that spoiler-free, uh, just crazy, man. Having a Half-Life game just appear... Be on our hands of virtual reality in the space of like was it six eight months no it was three months fucking hell they announced it like a like late november early december and it was out mid March. it sounds like an onion article or the what right well you know. yeah they, there were leaks you know they were like whispers of it for years and then yeah it was three months crazy it's one of the wildest things to happen in gaming in my opinion there's yeah. a lot of wild shit that happens in video games, but a Half-Life game coming out of nowhere, being in VR, being amazing, and having the ending that it had, just like, there's <laughs> nothing close this year to me. For you saying moments. all those things back to back to back has me shaking my it's, head. At, it's at, just at, insane. It's crazy. There's so many things it's about Half-Life Alex, Alex that encompass the reason why I love the hobby in the first place. And it's like the yeah. unpredictable nature of it. I just love the surprises that come out of this and just how good things can be. Uh, and I love VR as well. I don't, I don't want to go back down the rabbit hole of being sad about VR, but I love yeah. I love the format. And, you know, we're not going to go down it again. We'll see. We'll see what the future is. But I love it. Um, and it's the best VR game ever made. Yeah. And it is, yeah. Half-Life Alex is my game of the year. Half-Life Alex and Hades are both games that I would call perfect using the definition that I like, uh, which is many little things done well. Mm -hmm. And there are just 
Half-Life Alex is an interesting, like, here is every single good best practice <laughs> lesson that has been learned in VR yeah. all in one thing. And it, it really adds up. Yeah, it was like the first experience where I, I don't I don't get that ill from VR, but I can definitely feel mm. a bit of nausea at times. And Half-Life Alex is, for whatever reason, I guess just well-designed mechanics, the first game which didn't trigger anything in me. I usually have to use like the teleportation and the um, what do you call it, like, the notched spinning. Yeah, whatever that's called. I, mm -hmm. I usually need to use all of that, but I like freeform played Half-Life Alex with full movement, and I'd never played a VR game like that before. I could take my seatbelt off, you know, and like really experience an immersive full game in VR. It was very special. I only did that on my second playthrough. I actually used the teleport for my whole first playthrough. Yeah. Uh, and then I did it when I replayed it on hard i went to the full locomotion and and it does it it feels it feels quite good it's interesting a lot of uh, magic in valve some secret source i don't know what they're doing but everything they uh, make yeah <sighs> it's good i hope they um... i really hope that they stick true to the things gabe newell said earlier this year of we're going to make more video games i hope so too a lot but yeah. i'm also i've been hurt before <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so well, I'll just I'll just see what happens, you know. This is why I was lamenting being into the Half Life story of Alex <laughs> because <laughs> I don't want you know. Last time they had a Half Life game, it took thirteen years to follow yeah, up. Yeah, exactly. Um, thirteen years from now, we don't need to think about that. Uh, no, that's that's not. Yeah. But yeah, that's it. Not, um, you know, not the greatest list of games of all time, but like you said at the beginning, no. I think maybe I was being a bit too sour on the year. It's actually, there's some good stuff in I here. I feel like we do we do this every year, mm. I feel like, where it's like, ah, oh, this year was eh, eh, but then we talk about all the games, you're like, oh, yeah, that was pretty good. Yeah, good variation as well. I think so, yeah, yeah. I, but yeah, like I said, I think the biggest, the hardest thing for me about was the number one, I'm just, they're not being like a, an easy choice. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I do have a couple of honorable mentions oh, yeah. to quickly bang out. Yeah. Um, the two that I would have actually really liked to have put on my list were the two non-2020 games that I played the most of this year, and that would be, well, the first one is Minecraft. Oh, yeah, I yeah. I've heard okay. of it. Uh, but when I realized that we, I built, like, we built that whole town, all of Squidburg was built... I just decided that's what it's called right now, by the way. <laughs> okay. Uh, all of Squid... What did I just say? Squidburg yeah. was built this year, yeah, or rather yeah. last year, in 2020. And I was like, wow, I thought I thought that was a lot later ago. Uh, that was when I... That was like the first time I actually like built... Uh, like really got into the building and getting trying to get creative with the building. And it was really fun to build it with Dawson and Ben and have them build their stuff. And it, it's a pulling in like made up dumb story stuff to like influence the building and we're going to probably get into another build shortly mm -hmm. here and uh, I'm really looking forward to that and then right at the end of the year they stealth launched the RTX support and it is oh, yeah. uh, extraordinary it's extraordinary God, I, I've never one there's never been a graphical improvement that has changed a game so mm -hmm. much yeah, and definitely. uh and I I look forward to playing more of it. And even after playing quite a lot of it in 2020, uh, we will that yeah that game. At some point, I feel like we should do you know, or maybe it's just as a, a sort of jokey podcast discussion of like what are the best games ever, and like Minecraft is probably it. <laughs> probably yeah, that would Tetris. I'd say like Minecraft and Tetris are just they will last forever. Yeah. Definitely. It's incredible. It's incredible. Minecraft is still amazing. Oh. Um, the other one that I played a lot of, and I almost, I might, I, I almost played as much of it this year as I did last year, and that was Astroneer. Oh yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Dawson and I played a lot of Astroneer over the summer, and we did a server, so we started fresh. <laughs> that one service. clip of you going to space was really. Quick. <laughs> and Dawson doesn't even realize you've left the, left the atmosphere. Um, <laughs> yeah, so we did like the full progression. <laughs> after us both having done solo playthroughs and it was really fun to like beeline super efficient through the progression it was awesome and then we did everything like we basically we beat the game we we opened up we completed the uh, portal networks on every planet nice. 
and saw the ending and credits and it was a cu- it's a cute ending it's good I didn't even know you could beat it um yeah yeah um and then after that we got into doing extremely dumb shit <laughs> And it was awesome. That's all I've ever done in the game. (laughs) Our, yeah, you're right. Yeah, that's true with the explosions. And our rocket-powered paver truck. um, Well, one of them, which is off in space somewhere. Rest in peace. Uh, That was just... That game, I just love that you can poke at that game and it is totally down for it. Like, it, you can try all sorts of crazy shit in it, yeah. and it works. And it keeps... It doesn't... Like, I, I expect... I have, We've done many things, and you've been present for some of them, where it's like, surely the game is going to crash. <laughs> or you're going to hit a wall it, that what can't be passed. Or you're going to hit a... Yeah. Or something is going to stop working here, and it's just like, nah, nah. Yeah, we're good. We're, we got you. And when it does break, it breaks in the right way. <laughs> yeah like my rocket ship going to space because we put a few too many things on the <laughs> or the fact that you can create a, a road into space and then make a platform out there and build a base in space yeah. you're like this shouldn't work but it does and uh, astroneer is an amazing game and i love yeah. it um and then i will you know what i will be nice and i'll give one more little shout out to Immortals Phoenix Rising, oh. aka the Cyberpunk Waiting Room game. Yeah, is it right? Uh, I ended up liking that game more than I ever would have thought, and that was only after giving it a second try. Yeah. And uh, I will probably end up finishing it, you know, over uh, in a while. Uh, yeah, in a while. maybe. I like the way it looks enough that I will, and it's like not very combat heavy that I will maybe end up finishing it anyways it was a ubisoft game that i thought i was hating and then i eventually ended up enjoying even though it has uh way too much going way too much of the same thing repeated Mm -hmm. uh way too many times which is the ubisoft way but i was uh yeah i was a little more into it than i would have thought it's the best thing they've made in a long time yeah i agree i also haven't touched it in you know six weeks but uh, you know as like i said it was the cyberpunk waiting room and it was very good at that and i i and i you know and i do think it is genuinely a solid game yeah i agree um, just need to you know maybe make it like a 15 hour thing instead of a nine <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. which sure. is the, obviously the case with uh every ubisoft game right now um but yeah that's it and i i had thrown in quite most of the other games that you mentioned like Fall Guys, Risk of Rain, yeah. Deep Rock. I did throw them, you know, in the lower. I threw Microsoft Fight Simulator at the very bottom, and I also threw Dreams in there, which yeah, I'm sort me of surprised too. you didn't. Uh... No, it's okay, on my I'll, I'll, honorable that's mentions. It. That's it for my honorable mentions. So I'll throw it over to you. I haven't got that much, honestly. Uh, Astro Bot mm-hmm. was my eleven. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, cute little thing. I have Factorio on here again. I actually played like another twenty oh. hours of Factorio. Yeah, good old Factorio. Uh, but, you know, I've, I've played that game like 10 hours a year for like the last three years, so I just didn't didn't make the cut. But it's it's still so good, that thing. Shame it's hideous, but apart from that... <laughs> oh, God, it really is ugly, isn't it? <laughs> I think the only like proper um, honourable mention is Black Mesa, the uh, Half-Life 1 remake. I really like that. I-, I was really surprised about how much I enjoyed that and how much I think it stood up to the other games in the series and maybe even more so it's way more varied and long than the other games with a lot of like fun environmental variants really really cool game they did an amazing job hmm. of that remake um it's amazing that it came out and came together finally after like 15 years yeah also i'm gonna be charitable and just for the pure visuals on the tv i'm gonna give ghost of Tsushima just a little shout out um i thought that game was boring as shit to play but yeah. man, like the vibrancy of colors in that game and walking around, oof, definitely one of the highlights of the year when it comes to like visual design, I think. Yeah. Just like, yeah. Uh, just, just, I'm just done with like Ubisoft stuff over and over again. <sighs> yeah, yeah. But yeah, apart from that, I think that's it, mate. Yeah. We um, won't say anything about what to hope for from 2021. I will say, okay. Uh-oh. I will say, I 
hope to be surprised the way I was surprised by something like Final Fantasy VII. Right. What would that even be? I don't know. Hmm. Because there's no fucking Halo. Games announced for this year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's like three games announced right now, yeah. so I don't know, right? Um, maybe you know, Elden Ring. I'll end right. Up liking That's a good that example. Yeah. If that comes out this year, but like, I don't know. Yeah, and I hope that there are less messy releases this year. I hope that we Especially don't talk about video in, games on the internet anymore. Yeah, and I was just going to say exactly <laughs> that. I, I especially hope that there are less games that people have to talk about so much. <laughs> yeah. I don't want a game like The Last of Us or, or Cyberpunk this mm-hmm. year in terms of the discussion. Yeah. Because it's so exhausting. Um, and we're part of that problem. <laughs> you were amazingly unbiased and professional. Thank you very much. To be fair, though, our discussions of both games were the best oh, on the course, internet. So I want yeah. um, Nintendo to come back in a way that I oh, care yeah. about. <laughs> oh, yeah, Nintendo. I would like right. a Mario or a Zelda. Yeah. And Breath, Breath of the Wild both- is, a, you know, they say 2021, but apparently um, the yeah, Japanese yeah. work culture hasn't really acclimated to COVID very well. I don't know if that's incorrect, but I don't know. I just... I would love a proper Mario or Zelda entry because I, yeah, I like yep. their games. I just don't really get to play them because I don't give a shit about most of them. Yeah, they've been really... Yeah, it's been a weird e- several years for Nintendo, mm. I feel like. They've just sort of been putting out all their B games, you know? And uh, yeah, I definitely agree with that. I want some Nintendo charm again because that's what Astrobot did. It was like, oh, this is like a Nintendo game. Uh, uh, and it's, I want... Yeah. I was going to say I want Dying Light 2, but uh, <gasps> I just want that game to be good. So they can, they yeah, can take I, that time. I think, I think that game will come out this year. Uh, I'm scared. I hope it's good. That's my... Dis- that's Well, they I saw them. I actually looked into this just the other day. They uh, posted in their Discord that like there will be news about the game soon. Okay. And I think in like three weeks, it'll be the six-year anniversary of that game coming out. <laughs> Uh, the first game coming out, so maybe they'll announce something. I think that game will come out this year, and I'll this is and it'll be good. Ooh, wow, <laughs> that's the most optimistic thing that's ever come out of our mouths. Yep. Wow. And of course, I've cursed it now, so fuck. Yeah, it's your fault. We're doomed. Um, also, I think uh, Halo Infinite will be really bad. That's me cursing <laughs> it, so that it, it so that it's good. See what I did? Yeah. I hope um, I like something multiplayer based this year. That'd be wild. That'd be, <laughs> I wouldn't even. That'd be crazy. Imagine us playing like a multiplayer game that isn't like a dumb beans falling <laughs> over each other. I'll play Fall Guys too. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know what else to. You know, after twenty twenty, it's hard to demand much. You know. Yeah, though you know, if the stars align, I'm not even gonna fucking say mm. it. <laughs> I was gonna say like there could be quite a few good games this year, but. And everything gets I mean, there will be. Of course, every year there have been a lot of good games that have come out. This year, 2020 was no exception, and 2021 will be no different. So, yeah, I hope Horizon 2 is good. Um, I hope we get Elden Ring. And I hope everyone has a good and safe year. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for listening. And we will see you on the other side. Good luck, everyone. Bonger, bonger, bong, 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 b